Yeah, you like the fonts. Too bad if you are. Are you taping Zach at least? Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay, so can we start? Thing in the paper about okay. who wants to put it into. Again, thanks for coming. It's seven o'clock, and I'll call the meeting to order. Um, first, I just want to ask: Is anyone recording the meeting? Can you just identify yourself? Sure, I'm Amelia Kimmel with the Clinton Coaches Head. Great. John Kenny with WATD, 9519 FM. Great. Anybody else? Great. Thank you very much. Kim, you got those? Yes. Um, can I uh, have an acceptance of the agenda? Move to accept. Second. Second by Mr. Danahy. All in favor? Aye. 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 It is unanimous, 4 to 0. We will start um, the meeting with item number two, which is a walk ins. Are there any walk ins? Yes, sir. Yeah, if you can just speak into the mic so that Here. you can just move the mic over. You can yeah. thank you. Sit down. Need your name and address, Mr. Gibbons, yeah. just yeah. for the record. Joseph A. Gibbons, 223 Gannett Road. As a citizen, father, parent, voter of the town of Situate, and a lifelong resident, I'm extremely concerned about the direction of this community with regard to government right now. In these difficult economic times, boards of selectmen, one of their most important functions is the hiring, firing, review, and day-to-day -day management of a town administrator. And I feel as a resident, this board has dropped the ball since 2009. Mr. Chairman, I take objection, uh, 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 objection to this at this point. Uh, this board is not having this as an agenda item. I realize you're in a walk-in, sir, but you know what? You're putting us in a situation where we can't respond to your comments here. Okay, I, I have a couple great objection to that, that right now. I didn't finish, Mr. Gibbons. So okay. what I'm trying to say, sir, is that you want to discuss that. We are not able to do so because this is an agenda I is not an agenda item, and frankly, our hands are tied. So you're casting a lot of dispersions here that I think are completely wrong right out of the gate. So I just want to make that on the record, sir. Exactly. And if you want to have make a comment, that's fine, but we won't be insulted and we won't have any derogatory comments. So if you have something in general that you want to say, yes. then you can go ahead. But if you go down that path, I'm going to have to cut you off. Yes. I, I believe that the Board of Selectmen has lacked leadership with regard to okay. open meeting law and implementation of open meeting law. The open meeting law is, is there to add public discussion to public employees' contracts. And I believe that... Well, that's a narrow view of it. It's, it's there for many reasons. Yeah, but that, that's one of the major reasons. And I think this board has been exclusive rather than inclusive. I object we to those comments, yeah. Mr. Gibbons, yeah. and frankly, I find them offensive. Yeah. Okay. Well, my, ne my next question is, um, with regard to open meeting, why was the contract not discussed in public again as, as mr. Dan he said this is not on the agenda when is it going to be on the agenda then and I and I'll, I'll, I'll end and I'll walk out of here uh, when is this going to be on the agenda so I can come and, and discuss this in an open forum like it should have been done all along the original contract which was signed in June of 2009 was signed by one member of the board not a majority of the board and the amendments to the contract were never discussed in an open forum. I think it should be on your next agenda for your next Board of Selectmen's meeting that we discuss this and the implementation of the open meeting law. Point of, order, Mr. Uh, point of order, Mr. Chairman. Yeah. At this point, there has been a complaint that has been filed. Obviously, Mr. Gibbons, I think you're very well aware of it apparently from what your comments are, and I would suggest to this board that we wait until we hear from the Attorney General's office regarding it. And frankly, I do not think this board should have any comment until otherwise heard. I agree. So if you have another topic, otherwise we'll move on to the next one. I do have another topic. I made a public records request um, last week um, regarding a contract, and under state law, the Town accountants are supposed to be the keeper of all municipal contracts in a community. I contacted, you've had two different accountants in the last three months. I contacted both accountants, and on both occasions, 
both occasions, they told me that they did not have a copy of the town administrator's contract and they had to go to Mrs. Casey to Stop, get that. Please. Point of information. Um, thank you for your comments, Mr. Chairman, about what the purpose of walk-in is. But when you have somebody speaking to the board that is making allegations that are untrue, mm -hmm. then I think there's an opportunity for us to weigh in. As far as the contracts go, it is absolutely correct that the town accountant has a copy of every single contract in this community, including the town administrators. And I unfortunately have to comment that what this resident is stating is not true, that that contract is a public record, is readily available to people, and sits the original copies of all contracts in the town accountant's office. And Mr. Gibbons was provided with that contract over four months ago. Not the current contract, Ms. Vincasey. When I requested when I requested that on December twenty first, okay, I was not given the current contract. I was given the two thousand nine contract and the two thousand ten amendment. I was not given the current if contract. Want, if you want a public document, there's a formal process to go through. I understand that. I'm so a public I'm official. I've been one for 20 years. I understand that, Mr. Began. You've also been right fired now. from your positions, too, Mr. Gibbons. No, I have not. Okay. I've so never. That is an allegation. You're talking about allegations. I've never Mr. been Gibbons. fired from any public Mr. positions. Mr. Gibbons. And I resent that comment. That is not true. I resigned. Okay. Fair enough. I, I stand corrected. I, you resign, check sir. Check the record. I will check it for you. If you want a public document, then what you do is you send a letter in. We have 10 days to respond. You can send it to the clerk's office or to um, the, the selectman's office, and you'll get the, I guarantee you, you'll get any document. I understand any, the talking. public records law. Then, then there's, there's no question, though. Just Th there is a question, because I was not given the current contract you when I went. whatever when contract was available at that time. No, I was not. Yes, you were. Because if you want a copy of a current contract, send a letter in. You'll get it within 10 days. You signed the contract on December 20th. Chairman, may, I, may I break it? I think Mr. Dan, he said it very correctly. This is a matter of litigation now with the Attorney General. I just, I just don't think we should get into it here. Simple as that. Okay. Any other walk-ins? Yes, ma'am. Good evening. My name is Betty Johnson. I'm here tonight with some other senior citizens from Situate. I know that you've been receiving our letters. I hope you've had time to look at some of them and notice some of the signatures. We would like to request that this board support a plan for the Harbor Community Building to be made available exclusively for senior programs and activities Monday through Friday from 8 to 5, a time when the building is rarely used. Additionally, we propose that evenings and weekends that building could be made available to the entire community. Seniors need more space for educational and recreational activities. They also need available parking. We have neither. The existing senior center would then be available for development of a teen center or teen programs. While both buildings might benefit from some improvements and upgrading, the town could choose to do as much or as little upgrading as it likes. This is a fiscally responsible choice. It meets the combined needs of two groups that make up a very large part of the population. The Harbor Community Building represents an economic resource that already exists. And to destroy it when situate residents need it is not the best choice we can make. Another reason the seniors are here tonight is that many were unable to participate in the Pier 44 survey for reasons known to you all. The senior citizens need this facility now. We need it now, and you can help us. We hope you will. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Just a few quick comments, and I know that the majority of you are here for this issue. Um, the, the Pier 44 building is and has been available for town departments to have functions there for the last six or eight months, whenever Probably, and many, many yeah, departments right. have used it. So that is available and should be used for programming. <clears throat> there are certain requirements that can occur in that, in that building, 
and one of them is it cannot be held by a town office. So we cannot have administrative, the, the, the Senior Center and Council on Aging cannot move to that building and operate there. It has to be open to the public and it has to be um, go within guidelines of education, of recreational. So there are functions that can go Excuse on. Excuse me, I'm did still I talking, leave that sentence out? Nope, I'm still talking. Um, yeah. But um, so there are certain guidelines that, the pro that it can be used for and what it cannot be used for. Um, certainly if there was a program or if there was an event that you had that you needed that space for, all you have to do is call town hall and if it's, if it's available then you could use the space. Um, so um, <clears throat> in terms of what will happen in the long term with that building, that's what we're going over right now. There was a whole committee that got together for over a year, analyzed the building, got, took surveys from the people in terms of what um, the town wanted to use the, the property for, and that's what we're fi figuring out right now in terms of what the next step with the building will be. But it is available to you, it is available to any, sort, any town department to utilize right now. I would emphasize that the seniors usage would be educational and recreational exclusively. Um, Anne-Marie Galvin has a few things that she'd like to say. Uh, yes, uh, Anne-Marie Galvin, 81st Parish Road. Hello. Uh, I was tapped from an acquaintance of both of ours because I've been involved, as the board knows, and Mr. Norton is working with a large group of us on um, youth, examining youth substance abuse and situate. And, oh, uh, that's the first time I've heard him not loud enough. <laughs> um, a friend asked me to, to get in touch with Betty because she knew that I was working with a large group of um, people from across the community that are looking at substance abuse in situate and kind of assessing the situation and brainstorming solutions. Um, we're working at the high school with a broad group of people, including Mr. Norton. And it's been a wonderful exercise. There's lots of work to do. And one of the things that's on the brainstorming list is the possibility of a teen center in town. It's very, very early in the process. We, we would need to apply for a grant, most likely a federal grant is on the table. Um, tons of research, many teen centers fail. But I think we have a good case to, to look into it for the town of Situate. Um, so someone asked me to, to get in touch with Betty and talk about just between, you know, in a friendly manner, talk about how we're using buildings. And, fr and really, that's so far off in the distance. Um, we, uh, we started chatting about possibly, um, co you know, sharing um, the current Carver building now. And we're not really in a place to start utilizing that. It would require a lot of planning and a director and all, or so, all sorts of good stuff. So the more I talk to Betty and her constituents, I feel like they have a wonderful case <coughs> for wholesale moving their operation, maybe not the administrative piece, but just the, the usage. We all know that that building really is empty um, most of the day. It gets used sometimes. I've been to functions there. It's in decent shape. It's a little bit dated. But while we plan our, um, the long term, as we look at all the buildings across Situate and work on that um, study, and as we plan on possibly um, reutilizing Gates as a town hub and moving town hall there. I think all those ideas are wonderful and it's thinking big picture and long term, but we all know that's at least five years into the future, probably more like 10. And I feel like it would be wonderful to see people using that building there during the day. Maybe the administrative offices would have to find a little cubby at town hall or maybe they stay on Brook Street while it's not being used. But the, the educational and recreational piece could certainly move there weekdays and we could still rent it out or we could still use it for um, community Christmas and all the other functions that the, the greater town needs, youth programs, adult programming, because that's what it's really for. And maybe we rebuild it, maybe we move it over in the parking lot and make it bigger, but we probably don't need to. There's, it's a pretty big space and it has nice bathrooms and it's totally you know, functioning. So as it turns out, I'm not here to speak on behalf of teens, but on behalf of seniors, of which I will be someday. <laughs> That's Thank it. you, Emory. Just, just if I could Please, say, yeah. uh, Ms. Johnson, Ms. Galvin, <coughs> Mr. Loring, and, and ladies and gentlemen of the, um, the audience here, the board, um, we're going to be taking up this issue on Pier 44 um, relatively shortly. I anticipate probably within the next month or so. But one of the restrictions that has been um, placed on that facility and that property is not because of the town. It's because of when the town purchased it, it was due to the MBTA. So we are limited in our ability to use it. Now, when I say use, I mean the use. If it's a primary use, then we would be in violation of it. So that's why I've always said if there's an exclusive use, whether it's for Council on Aging, whether it's for Teen Center, whether it's for recreation, we would probably be in violation. This board's going to take that up. In the meantime, you've probably heard of the strategic plan that the Board of Selectmen has put in place looking at Gates, trying to figure out a long-term solution, the panacea for multiple ills, 
including Council on Aging, a senior center, including a teen center, including recreation. I know you're shaking your head there, but I mean, there's potential. Look at us here. Hey, long term. How long term? I, I, uh, I realize you just, Ms. Johnson, but you know what? I don't take that as, and I'm not taking this as a joke. I'm taking it seriously for my position. And so my point of the matter is, and this board does too, excuse me, ladies and gentlemen, please. The point of this board here is to try to find the solution. Council on Aging has been looking for a senior center for over 10 years, and this town has not done it. This town has decided against it at a, at a, a, a prop two and a half override. What we're trying to do is get the solution, but not just for the Council on Aging or senior centers, not just for teens, not just for recreation, not just for middle school, not for town hall or all the other departments that have their problems. We're trying to figure out the long term. What you're suggesting is an intermediate solution. And you know what? We're going to look at that and we'll evaluate it. And if it works, and if, first if we can do it, and if it works, I think this board will do just that. I'm not showing my cards right now, but I understand the needs and the programmatic pro, uh, the program programs for what the Council on Aging, Aging needs is woeful. They do need programs, and that may be the facility for it for short term. But I both, I, I ask you both to be actively involved as well as everybody else in this hearing room to be involved in the long term solution with Gates Middle School. So I challenge you to do that. So also be involved when we get back to this, because we are going to. Uh, we can't tell you right now because it's not an agenda item. Otherwise, guess what? Somebody's going to probably file and say, guess what? We violated open meeting law because we're discussing something we shouldn't be. So my point is, please be engaged. Please come up. Please watch. And we'll open it up, and we'll have you come and discuss this. And frankly, my position is, let's discuss it at Pier 44 when we have that meeting, OK? All right, well, thank you. John. Just, just, and I know, <laughs> Mr. Chairman, thank you. I know we've run over the five minutes allotted for walking, but this is important enough. I know you feel, and, we'll and so many people here. I think we can't lose track of the fact, what the Chairman said a few minutes ago, the building is available. You, you want to go use it for whatever, whatever the program is, five days a week, I guess, really, if, if it's available. Every Wednesday, you have your whatever down there. It's, it's there. Uh, call town hall, call tr town administrative office, find out that's not available, and if there's no problems, you use it for whatever the program might be. And again, that's until we decide what we're going to do long term. So it is available, it's there. I don't know whether you've been taking advantage of it or not. It has been available. Right. As well as probably six or seven other buildings in, in town as well Gar Hall, the Lorraine Schoolhouse. There's a number of facilities in town that can be utilized for some of the programs. I know some of some of those spaces aren't big enough for some of your things, but the space can be used. And, you know, this board is very supportive of this and of all the other changes. I mean, that's why we're pushing the evaluation of all the town buildings, and there couldn't be better timing to try and get a plan for the library and for the senior center and for um, the town hall and the fire station and police. That's what we're looking at right now. So we understand the needs of the senior center. We understand the, the deficits in that building. And we've got to find a long-term solution, and we're working on it. Mrs. Reedy. Marjorie Reedy, 32 Strawberry Lane. Having worked on Council on Aging, having come up with the Year 44 Committee, there are two things <coughs> I'd like to say. I'd like to see a legal opinion on whether or not it would be feasible for seniors to have that Monday through Friday. Just a legal opinion. This talking that we don't think. Let's be sure that right. it can't happen. And the other point is, I appreciate the need of looking at all the buildings, but we're running out of time. Okay, 10 years ago, I was a lot younger than I am today, and 10 years from now, I might not be here. The feeling of the seniors is, it's got to be now. The library, they're going to live longer. The people in the school, the town hall, the seniors are not. Now is the time to move it along. And all I can say is... We're not slowing down the process on purpose. Uh, you know, the last time we looked at it, the town said no. Right. You know, the town said we don't want a senior center, and they didn't vote for it. Um, and we are pushing it to find out what the what the best steps are to meet the needs of the total population. And you, and it wasn't that long ago, but 
but you were also on the committee and you know what all the surveys come back and none of them said, not none of them, but very few of them said, let's make it a senior center. I told you why. We know why. We did it with the, through the computer. Yeah, yeah. That, that's definitely, Seniors do not have no def that's definitely a component. But the people that did participate, there wasn't a lot of support and that's kind of what happened at the polls <laughs> about six, six or seven years ago. Five years ago. But, but we still see the need. We're not, it, it is part of the master plan that we're looking at. It is a component of whether it's at Gates or at whatever the component is. In terms of your question about using it Monday through Friday from 9 to 5, I don't think you can take that block of time. But I think if you said every Wednesday morning we're going to have a yoga class from 9 to 10, and every uh, Thursday afternoon we're going to have a um, luncheon or there, I think you could. But you see, you don't, that's like a movable piece. There's yeah. no home. It doesn't work. Right. Yeah. Yeah. We go here on Monday and there on Tuesday. It doesn't work. Right? And people don't have rides. But I thank you for people your time. Don't have Yes, ma'am. My name is Jane Travis, and I live at 20 Central Park. And I do yoga every Wednesday at the Senior Center, <coughs> but there's programs all morning and in the afternoon. And I'd like to think that we could use the Pier 44 building every Wednesday from 10.30 to 11.30. And that we're not going to be, and I may not be around <coughs> in 10 years. I'm going to be 79 this summer. And I may not be around in 10 years. I don't know why it would should, should take so long. I mean, the other towns all around have senior centers. And I don't know why. They've got plenty of ball fields. They spent almost a million dollars across the street from me not long ago to improve the ball field for the children. And that's fine. But we're seniors, and I think some things ought to be done for us. And not 10 years from now. I don't think I don't know where the 10-year number is coming up, but Pier 44. The decision on Pier 44 is going to be made, I would guess, within the next three months, three to six months. I mean, it won't do us any good unless we know we can go every Wednesday right. and that there's uh, the other exercises are Monday and Friday, that we can do that every week. Can Can I ask Miss yes. Johnson a question? Do you folks have a sense that that building? isn't available to you now or hasn't been for the past 10 months? Because if you wanted to, we if need, the council- We need to relocate the senior center. Where they are is not adequate. The bathrooms are not adequate. The parking is not adequate. The space is not adequate. The building is totally I inadequate. Understand that. I, I, my, I understand that, but my question is, was, do, do, are you not aware that that building is available for as much as you, party there, as yeah. you want it? Yeah. now and has been for for yoga or anything it's not as available as much yeah. as i want they want now. regular but not exclu exclusive use so i think to ask for it from monday through friday from eight to four or five is not exclusive use it would still be available every evening and all day and night on saturday and sundays which is when it's going to be used if we looked at what it's been used over the past two years i'm sure that's when it's been used okay it's been open to the public for 10 months mm -hmm. but I, I guess i'm just trying to get a clear sense from folks that that the building pier 44 has always been available to the Council on Aging for anything that is it's it wanted to every have weekday? there. And they can move anything if that the they Council want on over Aging there on had weekdays? if the Council on Aging had said like the yoga class that we want to book this every Wednesday from eight to ten thirty, that would have can been done. There's a record. Is this the first it's we to can be fair. Fair. Whoa, 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 whoa. You You're gotta be way fair too here. Aggressive. Yeah. Way too so no. I, that's I just I just want to make sure that folks aren't under the assumption that it hasn't been available for anything that was requested to be used at for as much as it wanted to be used yeah. at. Recreation has regularly scheduled programs there, and that time has been blocked off. So I just, and I understand what you're saying about the eight to four piece, which is something we'll look at, but I just want to make sure it's been available since it opened any time a town department wanted to use it. I think you make an excellent so, yeah, point. This not, is the first at the Board of Selectmen. This is the first yeah. time the seniors have requested Pier 44. Yeah. So it's true. It, it appears that yes. the way that we'll move yeah. forward with it is if you'll have to fit, pick some programs and, and move them over to, you cannot pick up the senior center and operate it out of Pier 44. It cannot be done. What you can do is say we want to run these three programs, yoga on Wednesdays, this on Tuesdays, this, and you can do that. Yeah. Let's look. I think the okay. point is, Mr. Chairman, the fair will be on the 19th. Okay. Prohibitive. All day. Right. We do what we can now. Right. And you should yeah. use the. Uh, Thank you. I heard you. Just wait a oh, second. Thank you. Yes. 
I think the point is I, you got to identify yourself. Mike, I'm Mike, you got to identify yourself. Address. I'm an elder. I'm an elder law attorney. What's your address? Pardon me? Your address. Paul Parkway, Thank you. Okay. Um, I think the point is that this group is saying, okay, we could you know, have a, a meeting here, a meeting there, a, a day here. Well, that's fine, but that's not what this is about. This is about providing an adequate facility for the seniors of Situate. It is not about can I have a, <clears throat> an afternoon here or something there. That's not what this group is talking about. Okay, I, I've, written, I've written a letter no, I'd like to submit to the for, board. Let me speak for one second. Sure. That's not Pier 44, okay? Pier 44 is not. That's our request. I know, and I'm giving you your answer. That's not, the senior center is not going to pick up and go to Pier 44. It cannot happen. But what we can do is we can do programming there. That's, that's what I'm saying. You're, you're not liking the answer. Oh, no, but no, that's, no, no. I, uh, what I'm saying is you asked what the, the focus I know what of, you, I know. of this group was, and it's not, you know, if it cannot be Pier 44, what can it be? And I think that's why they're here to ask this question. Uh, the demographics of Situate in the 19, 2010 census shows an elder population of 5,000 people out of 18,000. That's 36 percent of your population, your citizens, who have lived in this town, paid their property taxes, supported the schools, supported the government, and they use a limited amount of services. And as an elder law attorney, I come in contact with these people on a daily basis. Uh, I, they need, I come in contact as an elder law, not, not only that, but as a citizen. I lived here all my life. I wrote the grant for the library. I wrote the grant for Central School, okay? I wrote the grant for the town of Sedgwick, okay? Those projects didn't cost this town one penny. That was a great time during those years. Now, okay, with the grant, the, uh, it was went into the town meeting, and they voted, okay, yeah, we should have a, 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 uh, uh, a place behind the library. But then, because the grant was lost, because of a technicality, that the town voted, we don't want to do an override. We understand that. Um, but it's just that there is a need for the site. The site is there. There's a desire to do it. And what we're, we're encouraging the board to consider the request, and particularly this being Elder Law Month for seniors in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, it would be a wonderful gift for this board to give to these seniors. And, and that's, that's all I have to say, and I thank you. Just, okay. uh, Mike, as an attorney, attorney to attorney, the problem this board has, so everybody understand, is legally we cannot do what you're asking. Okay, let me say that again. Legally, we cannot do it. But what we're trying to be, why is because the way it was written from the MBTA, the funds that were used to purchase the facility, they're restricted. Restricted for educational and outdoor activities. Now, what we're looking to try to do is, if you're going to take a senior center, are you going to open up the whole windows and make it outdoor activities? Because frankly, you can't do that. What we're trying to do is, and what I think this board's going to do, or at least I think in the next, I thought we're going to do it in the next 30 or 60 days, have a discussion about it as an accessory use. Now, for you folks to understand what is an accessory, there's a primary use and then there's a, mi a minor use. Mike, you understand this. I know you yeah. do from zoning. And the problem I'm saying is, is that we have to have a primary use that fits within the four corners of the restriction that the MBTA who let us use those funds pursuant to the mitigation of the train to buy this beautiful site says you have to have a primary use that fits within the four corners. And I personally feel we can't, I know, I know we can't because you're not, you're not an outdoor open space and educational. You might fall into educational and we can do that if we can do an accessory, a minor use to help the programming out great for a short term and you're right short term may be five years maybe four years but if you're thinking it's going to be the long term we can't because we'll be in violation legally which puts us into another lawsuit the issue that you raise is a salient issue it's an important issue this town needs some form of a senior center or center community center that caters towards people of certain categories of ages and I have to tell you, in 2007, it failed. Shouldn't have, but it did. 
And I know I've talked as the liaison and senior um, 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 council on aging, saying there should be other alternatives, not just one. Don't put all your eggs in one basket. Think of different locations. As I told you, there's a strategic plan for the Board of Selectmen to try to figure out gates. And if that's not the solution and that's not the location, we've got to find other locations. And I personally think Driftway on the 12-acre parcel across from the golf course is another one. But you know what? That may not be it. Maybe we should go back to center school, central school behind the library, and that's the location to figure it out. But you can't put them all in one basket. In the meantime, we have to have a solution, and you're absolutely right. And I think we're all having a violent agreement here saying there has to be a better solution than what we have down on Brook Street because it's an abomination. I think you can ask any one of these four selectmen or three selectmen, including myself, it's a shame if you see any other council on aging or senior center. But all we're trying to tell you is legally we can't do what you're requesting, but if we can do it to some extent, on a temporary basis or even on a regular basis to go for programs, whether it's yoga, whether it's for um, Meals on Wheels to use the kitchen, whether it's for different programs that makes our Council on Aging and our Senior Center better for now for the people who can use it before they can't. I'm fully for it and I think everybody on this board is. So that's the reason why I don't want to make it sound like we're giving, paying you lip service, no. But we also can't do what's not legal and say, let's give it to you, because then we're going to be in a bigger problem, and then everybody's going to be upset. So I just want to make sure that I think you have to understand that you've got people up here who totally agree with you. But we can't do what you're asking tonight, because that would be unfair, and it would be wrong. And it would be illegal. That's the point. So I'll take you two on this topic, and then we'll move on. Yes, ma'am. To it. I'm also on the board of directors for the Senior Council on Aging, and I volunteer many, many hours at the center. But my question, and it's just a question, calling the facility a community center and using it as a community center, does that fall within the legal parameters of this MBTA agreement? Instead of calling it and using it primarily, primarily as a senior center, I know that recreation and um, the senior council and aging worked out different schedules where different activities could go on. So I, I really just say I'm not, I'm not being aggressive. I, I have an honest question. Community center does that fall within the legal parameters, or is that something that has to be explored by an attorney? No, a community center does, and that. There's a whole huge report, which I have part of it right here, that Mrs. Reedy was on this committee, and that is one of the three major options that that committee came up with, is making it some sort of community center with senior participation as well. So that is one of the major things that we're looking at right now. Yes, sir. in the 44 building. The question is, what is the protocol for getting that more programming into the 44 building? We don't control Florence. We don't control the Council on Aging. We don't control how is that going to be accomplished. And I want to work with you, John, how best to accomplish getting that programming into the 44 building. That's the first question. Second question, and you talked about. I'll tell you what. Let's answer that one first. Who do they contact to get programming to get a program at Pier 44 to use the space? It'd be through Florence and the Council on Aging Board of Directors. And if we <coughs> through the director. And and Lou, you can use me as liaison. Yeah. So that because there are more programs that I'd like to see this town have. Yes. We send our request to Florence CCU. You got it. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. And. And the only other thing I'd say is you have a half a dozen other buildings that you can utilize also. So don't think it's just Pier 44. You have the huge basement in the library. You have the Gar Hall. You have Pier 44. Well, there's some programs will work, some programs. I'm just saying there's other space there as well. Okay, but we now yep. know how to get more programming into the 44 yes. building. That's the first question. Yes. Second question is, um, and you talked about the override that failed. Before that, there was 
a funding amount that did succeed. I'd like to know the status because I talked to different people. I'm told that has been reestablished. I've also been told that it hasn't been reestablished. So I'd like to know what uh, what is the status of that original amount, Joe. You know what I'm talking about. What is the status of that original amount that was approved? And I understand it wasn't enough to build the whole new building. So what seemed to have failed was the request for the additional funds. Mm -hmm. The question is, do the original funds still exist? And <laughs> if so, what are the restrictions on the Should use of that, that right. original amount? <clears throat> That's the second question. I just want to clarify one quick thing on this. There were never any funds, there was no money put aside and set, there's not, there wasn't a $1.9 million in an account waiting to be spent. All there was was an authorization. Yeah. It still had to be funded through some sort of source, whether it's an override or free cash or something. But th there was a request for a specific building on a specific place with specific plans that was authorized. Yeah. And the funding for it never got well, that passed. That was your job, Ashley. But we got that went through town meeting, and that went through the election process. So we had authorization to spend that money. To, the town had authorization to spend that money on a senior center, right, Joe? I'm um, Tony. Go ahead. We even had a set of plans for that That's site. Right. So it's not that the town didn't. And I'm talking to you, new guys. It's not that the town didn't support the need for a senior center. It's that we didn't go in for enough money at the time. And who's to blame for that? I'm not going to mention names. It, it, <laughs> Lou, if you, if you had asked me this question on town floor, I'd have everything in front of me. But th let, me, let me go with my, my recollection, okay? We don't, I don't need the answer now. Just no, I, I, I actually think I have it. That's the reason why I want to make sure everybody's aware. The authorization and the monies that were appropriated back in 2004-ish or something like this, ultimately were again um, reauthorized and whatever happened on the floor of town meeting in 2007, and this is what you're discussing, had changed such that it's my understanding that what went to Prop 2 and a half for the vote failed. As a result, all the monies were not authorized. So. <laughs> You're asking what is th where is what's the extent of the money as it stands today? It doesn't exist. The authors the the um, uh, the votes to have it were the, the the authorizations existed, but the appropriations never materialized. Having said that, they were rescinded at town meeting, so everybody understands it. And the basis for that was is that the town said in order to build the council on aging or the senior center as proposed in 2007, we didn't have enough money. So what we, everybody in this room, needs to do is to say, okay, what are we going to do going forward for a senior center? We can talk short term, but that's not the panacea or the remedy for the long term. So you need to think about what's the long term. Are you thinking of the site for Pier 44? And as I said to you, that's not the site to look at. Are you looking at Gates Middle School? Hold on, Mrs. Johnson. Are you looking at Gates Middle School and saying, is that going to be the uh, ultimate um, so, uh, solution? I think it could be because there's going to be multiple uses there that could help everybody in this room going forward. But even if that's not successful or even if that's not sufficient, then you've got to think of other sites. Go back to the same site next to Central School. Go back to the Driftways an option. Or do you find some other town site and there are other potential sites? But to do that, we need everybody, including people in this room, to participate and say, what do we need, what are we going to look at to work towards a common goal and to try to achieve it, not through town meeting, but through an override, which is the ballot box, because that's what we need. And that's what failed. So I, I, again, I, I don't want to be antagonistic here. I'm, you're preaching to the choir because I think this town should have one. And I've seen a number of them throughout the South Shore and on the Cape that makes our senior center look awful. And I personally am ashamed to say we have what we have on Brook Street. And everybody in this room, I think, feels the same way. So the question is, what are we going to do about it? And how do we go from here? Now, you want the short-term solution, we can work. And that's why I say I'll, we'll work to try to get the programs because this town doesn't have the programs that other towns have, and we should have more. So that's, that's how I'm looking at it. And that's what we're doing as well. That's what this whole master plan is. 
is looking at the space at Gates, what can go in there, what can't go in there, and the other buildings in town that we can utilize. So we're doing that. We're doing that in, in the interim as well. Okay, we're going to move. If it's short. Why do I hear rumors that the 2007 town meeting did not rescind the original authorization draft? Did not. No, I, my understanding was is that there was a change on town floor, and that's the thing. There was a difference, however it was proposed or discussed. Well, With bond council, that's the reason, Lou, that I'm talking about. It is rescinded. We did it at town meeting, and it covered both um, authorizations. Yeah. And it was reviewed by town council before it went on the warrant. So at this point, we're starting from scratch in terms of building a new senior center somewhere. Okay. Any other walk-ins? Thank you all for coming. You're welcome to stay. We've got a lot of stuff on the agenda tonight. Thank you. <laughs> if a brain in your head, you'll go home. I am. Thank you. Yeah, let's take a. Zach, are we are live? When, when is our next meeting? No, absolutely. No, I. I May 1? Thank you. Okay, so is that. Did you go to the one the other day on the 7th? I, I didn't I work, yeah. work, My goal is to work to try to resolve that and get something. And I mean that sincerely. And I'm not. Into the senior center? Oh, itself is available. That could be another I don't want to say that, but I'm saying. Well, I know it's. I, want, I know it needs. I want the short-term goal. That's what I'm, I'm looking for. It's not adequate for, now for people, for people who can use it. Thank you. No, thank you. I agree. I, I'm not. I know. I, know, I, I, know. I, know. I, I see I'm you on the TV. I want. I I I I I I thank you. Never mind. Never mind. Never mind. Yes, this is more. Well, we put this in the, put that in the, in the folder. Kim, can I give yeah. these to you? I don't know who's, this is somebody's. Did you look at that? Yeah. No. <laughs> I went online. Got Thank you very much. Yeah. That's great. Thank you. Yeah. I appreciate yeah. it. Thank yeah. you. Oh, Kathy, she'll like that. She'll like that. Yeah. Yeah. She'll like that. Yeah. yeah, that's great, Joe. Oh, I forgot we took it. Yeah. Good job. Good job. Keep, keep it going. What's up? Keep it going. I was afraid to say something. I was going to come. Huh? Yeah. Okay, we'll get back to uh, item number three, which is a discussion vote and a change in the DBA for the backyard yeah. burger bar. Mr. Ms. Chairman, I'm going to uh, recuse myself on this matter, please. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah. So the three of us. No, Ms. Ms. Wilson, how are you? Hey, how are you? Yeah. One second. Jen, can you close that door?
Yes. Hi, Joan Wilson, A. Claymore Terrace, situate. So you've come before us because you have to change the name of your, actually, yeah. do you have to change the name of the restaurant or just the, the, uh, the, the DBA, the backyard, you know, burger bar So sign well, the, the actual restaurant will change as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, so there was some company down in Alabama that had already got that name and they've contacted you and you have to change it and you're going to change it to East Coast. No, no, it's on JW's Burger Bar. JW's. JW's. Oh, I have a new one. Yes. Okay. Got a tone. Okay. Want it? Well, you'll make the motion, so. So this is just a formality in terms of. Mm -hmm. Right? That's it. Motion. Yes, please. Move the Board of Selectmen vote to grant a change in doing business as DBA for Backyard Burger Bar to JW's Burger Bar per the applicant's request. Second. Second by Mr. Norton. Further discussion? How'd you get that name? Um, <laughs> um, all in favor? Aye. 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 It's unanimous. Good luck. Thank you. Thanks. Sorry, Timmy. Yeah. <laughs> Keep up the good work. Thank you. Bye. Okay, now we'll move on to item number four, which is a discussion vote and award of some contracts. Kevin, is Al coming in or just you? Are you going to? Um, Al should these? be coming in also. Okay. Go ahead. Oh, can someone tell Al? I mean, uh, John. John. Here comes Al. Can you get John? Can you tell John? I think you can start, Kevin. Okay. Yeah, we're up. Um, the first one that we have is approval of a contract to purchase a new backhoe for the water department. We recently put this out to bid, and we had a low bidder of Milton Cat for $82,711. And this was this is coming from the Water Enterprise Fund. Correct. It was passed at the last town meeting. Correct. Um, and the uh, purchase price was $82,711. There was one other bidder at 108000 Correct. Motion, Mr. Chairman? Please. Move the Board of Selectmen vote the contract for the purchase of a CAT CAT 430E Black Hole to Milton CAT CAT Milford Mass contract 12-LB-12 for the bid price of $82,711. Second. Second by Mr. Harris. All in favor? Aye. 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 It is unanimous. Four to zero. Thank you. The second bid is for awarding the INI project through Cedar Point in the Sand Hills area. Um, that is for $525,350.01. That's coming out of miscellaneous funds I have listed from uh, past town meetings. And that will be doing um, inflow and infiltration repair throughout the area. Right. And for those of you that don't know what that is, there's water seeping into our sewage or our treatment system. Um, seawater, groundwater, and uh, what is it's some crazy percentage of, of the water we process is 60 something. Um, the, the base load for our sewer plant um, is around 900,000 gallons a day. Uh, when it rains, we'll get as much as 2.8 million gallons a day in it. That limits, therefore, how many homes we can connect. The least expensive way of expanding sewer capacity is getting rid of uh, water that comes in uh, other than through home sanitary systems. So by eliminating INI or reducing INI, which by the way, every community in Massachusetts has to deal with continuously, uh, we're actually growing capacity at the sewer plant, enabling us to hook new homes up in the future. All of these uh, uh, miscellaneous funds are from within the sewer plant and are, are paid for uh, by the sewer plant. Just curiosity, Al or Kevin, is there an ability to, I know sludge builds up on the inner portion of the pipe, is there an ability to find out potential breakage? Because I know uh, a lot of those lines are old, over 100 years old, and um, to try to determine, no, they have been a lot of breakage. No, these are actually the sewer lines, they're not that old, but they're, okay. what they did is we've actually cameraed a lot of the lines and pinpointed some of the areas where we do have, where we do mm -hmm. have leaks, um, and some of them are more service connections. But um, this project here does it kind of in an, unobtrusive way. We're not going to rip up the road. We're actually going to go into the manhole with cameras and cleaning devices to get in and seal the pipe. What they'll do is they'll put like almost like a sock liner or like a fiberglass liner in there and put it in and then heat it up and that'll act as the pipe itself. It forms into a stronger 
piece and it'll stop the uh, stop the leak. So is it the water lines that are the ones that are all? These are sewer lines. I know, the water lines, the water the, yeah, lines the water are the ones that need to be dealt with. Um, okay. The like ones we that break, working, create brown water. We right. were working now over Ghana. It's, you know, we got 111 year old lines in some okay. of the areas, so. Thank you. Yeah. Just one comment, Mr. Chairman, thank you. Uh, about f six or seven years ago, when uh, we first started putting money into this I and I, four hundred thousand, five hundred thousand dollars a year, and my numbers might be a little bit off here, but the the amount of sewage taken in by the sewer treatment plant was around one point three million gallons a day, give or take. Uh, since then, and we again have spent five hundred thousand, six hundred thousand dollars every year, maybe a total of five or six million dollars together. Uh, since that time, we have sewered probably, Al, how many homes? Another 340 homes we have sewered. 340 homes and, and still are able to sewer more homes. But yet, the amount of sewers taken into the sewer plant has not increased. It's exactly. about, still about the 1.3. In fact, it's got down a little bit. And there's only one thing to, to point to that, and that's the, the INI money. It's the only thing that, that makes it possible for us to sewer whether it be the cliffs, whether it be mine, it, whether it be the next area to be sewered, it's, I, I'm fully convinced that I wasn't a complete believer in this six or seven years ago, but I've become a believer. I'm fully convinced that that's due entirely to the INI program. So, so the soaring we're, we're, soaring we're doing now and the soaring we'll do in the future is directly attributed, to, in my opinion, to that. So, so this project is for... Um Five hundred and twenty-five thousand dollars, and as Al said, it's all coming from prior articles for uh, the sewer department. Tony, yes. Where was this advertised? Was it goods and services? Were you guys surprised there were only two bidders? No, it was, it was in the central register, but it's kind of specialized work. Um, we actually expected some more bidders, right. but um, one of the issues where it is specialized, if if one of the other companies is really busy. You know, okay. um, they don't really want to jump on something that we're trying to get get done. Um, yep. Yep. And we're not going to have to excavate, so we don't have to worry about change orders and stuff like that. You, Possibly, but no. You no. Are, you know, you never know what you could find in the ground there. I right. mean, going into the manholes. If yeah. if we found an area that was really bad, I mean, we'd want to fix it. All right. This is a different method. With uh, in the past, we've used a method whereby we go into a. Uh, we go from the surface down, dig up a yard or dig up the side of the road to get to the damaged area and repair it. This is one where it's done internally in this, within the system. There's a new technology where they can do the work from the street. Um, some of these uh, leaks are within the street uh, layout. Some of the leaks may very well be further up in the line. We'll be coming back to you to talk about um, uh, how we assess the cost if the leaks are actually in the homeowner's portion of the line. We found 74 potential leaks from looking, but that that can increase or decrease or, or whatever. You don't know until you're actually out there doing the cleaning and, and uh, fixing the line itself. Okay. No, I just I just I think it's worth repeating what Joe said. It's just so important that we not only do this but continue to do it in the future. And I think DEP makes us do it. Am I correct? We're required. We're to wants do this, us yeah. to have a program. That's it. Thanks, Tony. Motion. Please. Move the Board of Selectmen vote to award a contract for the inflow and infiltration repair. Contract 12 Roman numeral 2 30 to National Water Main Cleaning of Canton, Mass for the sum of $525,250.01. Second. Second by Mr. Harris. Further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 It's unanimous 4 to 0. For C. Number C is we also put out a bid. Um, for the water department, and this is a unit price bid for all the parts and pieces that they'll be purchasing over the next year. It was about a hundred and parts that you assume. You don't know for certain the we parts don't know you're going to certain do. what right. we're going right. to use. But for example, if a piece of pipe breaks or something to that effect, um, to meet our requirements by 30B, right. we have to have a a standard vendor that we use. So we've got a list here of couplings and clamps and. T's and hydrants and all this sort of stuff. Nuts, bolts, and everything else. Don't what did we do before? Did we ever do? I mean, this is nice. Thanks. This is um, this is great. Last year I put it out to bid. But five years ago or something now, do you recall? Do we just go to Holdley automatically because they were local? Uh, yes. 
um, in the past we weren't quite as organized and um, it was what, when a part was needed you found out about it and you got in the truck and went to get it and it uh, resulted in time delays. Um, Plus this is a, a more concerted effort to have some supplies that are necessary on hand and then have a vendor who's available to us on an emergency basis if we needed it. So this is a more organized and uh, you hold on regulatorily that. compliant way of doing and this. And it's over the 25, you got Efficient. an estimate of 30, 29,000, so it's above the... Well, the, the 29,000 was a list. If we took the unit price of every item and tallied them all up, it came out over $29,000. But usually the water department spends about thirty-five to $42,000 a year just in miscellaneous parts and pieces and everything else. Okay. Motion? Thank you. Move the Board of Selectmen vote to award the unit price contract for the water pipes and fittings, contract 12-WA-11 to John Hoadley and Sons from Rockland, Massachusetts. Second. Second by Mr. Harris. Further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 It is unanimous, four to zero. Letter D. Now this has to do with the, cons this is the uh, South Shore Regional Services Consortium. Yes, these are uh, highway contracts. Um, we belong to a consortium that is a subset of the uh, Metropolitan Area Planning Council. It's called the South Shore Regional Services Consortium, and they go out on behalf of about 10 communities and place bids for highway services. That would be paving contractors, grinding contractors, people who do line striping, catch basin cleaning, uh, guardrails, street signs, disposal of earth materials. Disposal and earth materials. Um, they, we, we belong to this. We all put in quantities of what we think we'll use in a year. They go out for bids which are properly advertised and posted uh, and then they award it to the lowest qualified bidder. It's a great service to us to have, to, rather than us having to go out and do these 12, 14 different kind of bids ourselves. Um, and now uh, we're coming to you saying that we would like, each community needs to then decide uh, and, and write a contract with the uh, lowest qualified bidder and that's what we're asking you to vote to do tonight. Uh, there are 12 listed here for numerous uh, pieces of work and be glad to talk about any of those if you'd like to. So the consortium goes, does the negotiating for us, we get the lowest price for being a member and you're looking for us to vote these 12 services. Yes. Great. Any questions? Uh, just Sean? one, F. are we locked into these? I know with like two oil and four oil, towns can either jump on board or if the market's down, they can jump out. Is that yes? You guys have that flexibility. I think no. We're locked into these you once are. we sign. We'd sign a one-year contract with these. Okay. Um, what we found out in the past, though, because of the scope, this takes a lot of the South Shore into consideration. Like for example, on catch basins, you get a much lower price. Yeah. No, you're handling someone else South Shore. Compete. Yeah. No, that's fine. If you guys feel confident, that's great. What I meant was that we have the choice to elect to go with. For instance, the guardrail contractor. Once we sign a contract, though, they are our contractor. Right. Yes. Okay. Motion. Motion. Move the Board of Selectmen vote to sign the contracts for catch basin cleaning and related services to Truax Corporation of Lakefield, Massachusetts, pavement recla uh, reclamation to Mass Pavement Reclamation of Hanover, Massachusetts, pavement markings to Highway Safety Systems of Rockland, Mass, crack filling treatment to Seal Coating Inc. of Hingham, Mass, road surface sealing to All States Asphalt of Sunderland, Mass, road surface micro surfacing to Seal Coating Inc. of Hingham, Mass, cold planing to T.L. Edwards Inc. of Avon, Mass, bituminous concrete paving to T.L. Edwards Inc. of Avon, Mass, sidewalk reconstruction to Capone Brothers Inc. of Randolph, Mass, cold planing to T.L. Edwards of Avon, Mass, Debris disposal to Capital Waste Services of East Boston, Mass. Earth materials to G. Lopes of Winthrop, Mass. Guardrails to DeLuca Fence of Methuen, Mass. Street signs to Northeast Traffic Control of Plymouth, Mass. At the prices quoted at their response to the request for bids issued by the South Shore Regional Service Consortium through June 2013 with the option to extend for an additional one or two years at the town's sole discretion. Second. Second by Mr. Harris. Further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 It is unanimous, four to zero. Thank you. Great. Now we'll move on to item number five, which is a discussion vote of Seawall Easement at 117 Turner Road. 
Mr. Caffrey. Just a couple uh, thoughts of uh, background here. This is the <coughs> seawall that was damaged in the storm following Christmas 2010 on the 26th. We woke up on the 27th after horrendous flooding in that area to discover that the seawall in the area of, of 117 or so Turner Road uh, had been uh, busted through. Uh, we made some emergency repairs, which included uh, numerous uh, huge boulders uh, to uh, secure the areas pending uh, uh, future storms. We then went out and hired a uh, qualified engineering firm to develop a solution for us uh, for repair to this. Uh, this uh, is under the guidance of the uh, Department of Conservation and Recreation, the DCR, who uh, provides some guidance for us on this. Uh, one of the things that's required to affect the repair is a, an easement to get in there and make the repairs. And then because we're using public monies to make these repairs, we need then a permanent easement to be able to go back and make subsequent repairs if, if um, uh, damage occurs. This, we would require an easement just as if we were putting in drainage on your street and asked for an easement across your property uh, to uh, install the drainage. We would need ongoingly a permanent easement so we could maintain that dra drainage system because we'd be responsible for it forever, as we will be with these repairs to this public seawall. Uh, there are three properties affected. Two properties have granted those easements. A third property uh, is reluctant to grant an easement, a permanent easement, and therefore uh, we are here today to ask that you proceed with a taking of this easement. Right. So the, the real reason for this is because the entry point is at the far end and you have to cross these people's property to get to the part where the, the wall is damaged. I'll let Kevin talk about the actual um, repair work and to answer your question more clearly. In, um, in the repairs with the design that we've had that we've put together um, in consultation with the DCR and with Coastline Engineering, um, I've included in the packages and you've got a colored sheet on that. One of the plans that they see will be a big help in this area is including a 10 foot splash pad behind the wall itself. So when the waves go up and over the wall, they go into the splash pad, it goes into the stone, and then it filters back out. The problem we have, similar to what happened at Edward Foster, is the sand all comes out of those areas, and then it actually buckles underneath the wall and causes a collapse of the wall. So that the area in question would be a 10-foot permanent easement where that splash pad would go at this area. Um, and that's outlined on that property. In the yellow? In the, it's actually in the, well, at least in mine, purple. I made a bunch of them. You might have different colors. I'm sorry, my markers were dying. It's the one to the right hand it's side. It's the purple section right here along this edge right here. Okay. And if you look at the cross section, on the cross section, it's this area right in here where the splash pad would be. So it's on the street side? It's on the street side, correct. Tony? Yeah. If I own that house, can I put a deck over it, Kevin? Well. Yes. Um, the only problem with the deck would be is it would have to be cantilevered in a temporary, a temporary position. I had, um, it's Mr. Farrington's property and I actually walked over with Mr. Farrington and we talked to Neil about it. It would just have to be removable in case we had to get in there and work on it. Now, the likelihood of having to get in there and work on it is nil. If we build it right if the we, first If we build right. it, yeah. you know, I mean, we're going to lose probably other sections of wall before we use that if, if right. that's a brand yep. new section of wall unless something catastrophic happens where it gets hit with a really strong force. If, right. if you look at the uh, this drawing here you'll notice that there is a uh, the very top line the, the top horizontal line right here okay that's called the 100 year storm washover. Uh, the line right below it which is and just a teeny bit below it is uh, called the 50-year storm splashover. So basically what happens is the storm water splashes over the top of the wall and collects in the backside. And what this does is just a splash pad for it. Okay. Now, if actually, if your deck is right up next to it, the storm water is going to splash over and beat the bejesus out of your deck. Mm -hmm. but, so, but that's, again, the option of the landowner to, to do what they so choose. But what we need to do is if, if there's damage to this splash pad, we need to be able to 10, 15, 20 years from now be able to get in there. And so that's what the purpose of the permanent easement. 
Just, just I, I just want to clarify, because so, I'm looking at the detail <coughs> on number two, which is a side profile of the wall itself. It's just so I'm clear, it, it represents that it's 10 feet that you're looking at, not from the base of the wall, but somewhere about, um, I'm not sure how many feet down, uh, but you're looking for only a 10-foot easement. Am I clear on that? Yes, the original, the original easement showed the way it was drawn out. Um, we met with the DCR in the way they wanted the easement drawn up, and which was originally drawn up was from the very <coughs> last piece of the seawall, which would be the last base section. Okay, but that's not what we're looking at no, today. No, and the way that fell back, it was, on mis it was in, almost in Mr. Farrington's living room. Okay. So what I did is I just requested this 10-foot section and drew it back so that it would in my mind, I think it's a little more reasonable. It's not from the top of the wall, but it seems to be going down um, almost like where, what's it called, the 10-foot uh, wide splash pad of stone. It would be the stone, end of the, the bay, splash pad. What, the bottom what I want to do is just okay. include the easement on, on the whole side. Okay. That was my first question. So, I mean, if you're going from the top of the wall, it's more than 10 feet. It would probably be, I don't know, maybe 12 feet or something um, if you go from the top of the wall. I think it's pitched at a, a quarter inch per foot, and it might be... You know, it might be another foot, approximately. The second question I had was, when I first looked at this, was I was under the impression that the wall itself behind Mr. Farrington's property was being replaced. When I looked at page one, I realized it's only just maybe about three to four feet at an angle that's being replaced, correct? Correct. My question is, is there a need at this point in time to get a full extended, well, strike that. Let me ask you this. The next property is the... Gormley property and then I think Brennan property, right? Correct. But you're not getting an easement from any of the other properties to get there, right? We have easements from the other two properties that are out there to do some repairs to the wall, which are more um, grout repairs and crack repairs. The easements being, are we talking about the Gormley and Brennan or are we talking about other um, people? Johnson and okay. the, other one, the other one over beyond... The reason why I'm asking it is this, is that I realize you're looking for what appears to be about 30 feet of easement, not the full length of his lot, and primarily it's for the splash pad. And I guess what I'm looking at is, I understand from property rights, that's an awful lot to be asking a property owner to give up if you're not actually replacing the wall. And my reason for saying that is if the wall goes, then I would fully support saying take the easement because he's getting a benefit or the family's getting a benefit. It appears as though the only benefit he's got, not that there's a benefit, he's getting a new wall next to him. I understand that. And they're, you know, there's the, they're going to strengthen the, the portion between the joints. I guess what I'm concerned about is, is that if I were the owner, I'd be concerned that I'm losing an awful lot in value of property rights. If, if I'm not, if I'm getting a splash pad, I understand that. It's going to help the flow of water coming over. And I know I've spoken to Mr. Farrington. He indicated that he's willing to give a limited easement to be able to put the splash pad down. But his problem is that he doesn't want to give up all legal rights to the easement. And I guess I kind of understand that. If he was getting a full wall, I'd be like, and he was fighting it, I'd be like, you know what, Mr. Farrington, you're getting a brand new wall, and it's not going to destroy your house. But here, he's being asked to give up an awful lot in property rights, which is very valuable because he's on the ocean. Having said that, I also understand that this is an ongoing concern because presumably walls further down are going to have to be repaired and or they're going to be broken and those property owners are going to have to give up those rights for us as a town owner to repair our walls and that's the concern I raised tonight because you're asking him to give up an awful lot in value whereas Mr. Gormley, Mr. Brandon, they're getting a new wall so those easements make sense. Well recognize we're we're using public funds to make a repair to this wall. Uh, the the repairs to the wall um, benefit immediately the uh, where, uh, the abutting property owners. In addition to that, the oh, 50 or so people behind it who were flooded out last December. Yep. The the engineer who uh, has designed this and has stamped this and says this will work has said we would need to have a splash pad extend beyond the break, um, well beyond the break, in order to ensure that the repairs to the wall and the potentially damaged, hidden damage in that wall isn't further exacerbated by a storm. So what we've, uh, what we've purchased through the engineer's stamp is uh, their verification and therefore through the use of their stamp, their certification that, and actually financial um, liability, 
that this is the solution that will repair this wall in a substantial way. So it's um, public funds on the wall. Uh, what the public is asking for is the ability to maintain the asset they've put in. Um, the likelihood of having to go in and do anything there is extremely small. The betterment to the property is it's a substantial improvement to the wall in front of the property. Uh, reduce uh, the, and it's a, uh, it's could not really interfering with the use of the property because it can be decked over. Could, could you give them a limited easement, not a full-fledged easement, a, a limited for purposes of just repair, repairing and or um, replacing sure. the a splash pad? But I think you're looking for a full-fledged easement. I, I'm only asking, I mean, if this wall breaks or the wall next to it breaks, I'd be all into saying, yeah. take it. And, and go from there because it, the it, the only reason can you get a easement, limited easement though? The only easement we need, it can be limited to repair for the for purposes of repair. We don't need walking access. We don't need, uh, it's not a public access. It's not a, uh, we can- Could I interrupt you for there for a second? Mr. Farrington, would that be a problem for a limited easement just yeah, to replace? I've always, you know, I've been such a, a willingness okay. to do so all along. Okay, okay, well hold on. Then maybe we have an agreement going. Can we, can we agree to something along I, that line? Look at the wording now. It says, uh, said easement is taken for the purpose of constructing, reconstructing, installing, replacing, maintaining, and repairing a seawall in the easement area to cross and recross said purpose for such, for, uh, said property for said purpose. So it is limited in terms of only for, you know, construction and repairing of that wall. If we were to interject limited easement on the order of taking, would that, for the purposes as so specified, I uh, just put yeah. said easement, li said limited easement, just put a limited easement. Would that be acceptable? I, I, let me tell you this. I, I mean, I, and, and Mr. Farrington, I know, but I, I've told him this before, is that if there's another breach of the wall and we need to go through there for a full-fledged easement to repair the entire wall, I'd be like, you got to do it because you got everybody there. But is that something that would work? Um, it's I'm not a lawyer, but I, know, I, I, I referred this to Jim Toomey, and this is what he gave me, and this is a suggestion that he said we do we do this taking. So I and, and we're not, but the wording is not our hang-up. You know, that's not an issue. If there okay. is some uh, way that the wording can be changed to make it more uh, palatable to everybody involved, it's the issue. <coughs> what we want to do is go repair the seawall. Okay, we've been told mm -hmm. we need a permanent easement to do that. Can I ask one other question then? Assuming tonight. And I don't want to belabor this because the wall needs to be repaired and we need to get it started. If we're able to get this resolved, if not tonight, our next meeting, which would be in two weeks after we reorganize, how soon can we get started on it? Do we have to go out for RFPs or requests for we proposals? We have to go out for bid and we have to go through the whole process. Okay. And just for purposes of everybody here who, who's concerned about the wall, how long are you, in, just so they understand, Kevin, what's the anticipated time to do the RFPs and go from there? Um, the well, we have, we have one issue that we're working out now um, with the Brennans in regard to their deck if, because the deck is built right up to the actual wall. And if we replace the wall, the deck would collapse. And, and that's something going on with town council and, and the Brennans, which is hopefully squared away very soon. Um, once that occurs, we'd have to get in the central register, advertise for two weeks, You're probably looking at three weeks. Um, then we would have to come back to the board and award to the lowest bidder, which is another week to a week and a half. You know, you're looking at a good five weeks. Can I ask this then? We were okay S right now. Since you're dealing with another potential issue, could we at least get another two weeks so that maybe I can talk to Mr. Farrington, town council, to see if that works and have it out in our next meeting, which presumably maybe the other issue is resolved, and if that's the case, it's taken care Maybe of. I can suggest something since this was tabled from your last meeting and now we're talking another two weeks before we can do anything, is to vote the suggested language that you have suggested and then also with the contingency that if it's not acceptable to town council to vote it as presented so we don't lose another two weeks. Yeah, but you're going to lose two weeks anyways because you got the Brendan problem because that deals with the deck with the town that authorized them putting a deck out there, having to take down and figure it out. That's going to take another week or two. And the problem I have is if I'm an attorney who wrote this, I'm not going to say change it. I'm going to say keep it the way it is because that's the way I like it. And I'm only looking at it from the perspective that if, if we're able to do a limited easement as, a, as opposed to a full-fledged, because this says easement, I'm inclined to say if we can put the word limited in there, then it's only specific to those issues. And, and frankly, I think if 
that's all you care about and that's what town council is willing to I think mr. Farrington has already stated that that's what he's willing to do then I'd say that's what I would do but if you gentlemen want to go the other way that's what I'd do. I think we if we have and I excuse me fully understand the, the two-week delay but I think if there's an opportunity to go to town council and reach a, a, a compromise or an agreement with the homeowner in the town then so be it for two weeks let's try to make that work I mean I if, if it can't be done then we have a decision to make in two weeks I agree but I, I have to think the town council can write this in such a way that that uh, everyone will be well, I would the only thing I'd add is that if we get it done quickly we can just have a meeting two we, days later or meeting on a day. with that one yep. item yep. and get it we might not even need a meeting because I assume if he signs on to it it's 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 a moot point that's, that's it yeah so okay. that's true the only event you need to meet again is if it's a no-go correct yeah so we yeah. could ask change the word does that work for you mr. Farrington Absolutely. thank you we, we could ask if, I, if I may to jump on it. Um, Kevin mr. Farrington's first he he wrote a recent letter back in January requesting a limited easement and that was forwarded to town council and and, and this was the response that, that we did receive so um, so what I suggest is why don't we vote it that way and give John a chance to try and iron it out so that all parties are amicable and see if we can't get it to work before we have to go with the full fledged. Does that make sense? Yes. Does that make sense with you, Mr. Farrington? Yes. Does that work? Okay. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Doris Creary, 8 Ocean Side Drive, Ann's neighbor. One of the things I want to point out is when the seawall was repaired on Ocean Side Drive, that's property number 12 through 20, a much bigger section of the wall, there was no taking of easements. All the work was done from the beach area, and that um, was not part of it at all. So, I mean, I really question, uh, and as a person who could be in this position, whether this is really a need that has to be done. The work was done from the seaward side mostly. The forms were put in, and I think any of us would grant temporary for repair. But when you know somebody's talking that the likelihood might be 15 or 20 years to deny a homeowner the use of their most important asset, what we all long for, which is our deck, it's our backyard, and we have nowhere else to go. And having a four or six foot wide deck is worthless uh, in where we live uh, during the, uh, the summer months. And uh, that's really what we're discussing here. And, and I really feel it's important that you think about the fact that there are five houses, only four or five houses away from these properties, that that did not happen when it was prepared. The seawall itself is on property that has a permanent easement as well as all of the land in front of it. Even though some of us hold deeds that say, you know, we own to the lower water line, we know that property was grandfathered when that seawall was built. Mr. So, Mrs. Cleary, right? Yes. I'm sorry, just sorry. No, you can sit down, that's all right. Okay. That, I, I want to address it um, because I was there at the breach shortly after it broke and and the big issue is is access I understand that would might make sense as a homeowner to be able to go out from the ocean side to do it the problem you run there is you're dealing with the tidal issues so to repair something on on the seaside you have to deal with barges and there's riprap and everything so it's much easier to go from the backside which is the reason why there's a 10-foot easement or the need to be able to access and so what they said was and I, I understand it makes sense it's easier to go from the backside to fix it. Now the problem you have is if you don't have an easement or a limited easement, you have no right to go there. And what the town wants to do, and I think it makes sense going along, is that we own the wall. In order to repair it, if we have a million dollars to fix a stretch of wall, if we have to go out through the ocean, we're not going to be able to fix that stretch. We're going to fix that stretch because of the cost to be able to do it during the tidal. Plus you're dealing with the night issues. You know, you can't do it during the night and all that nightmare. The point, though, is, is that access is needed whether it's a full-fledged or limited we're going to need it and as we go down that wall we're going to have to repair it so I don't want to change you know turn one side to the other but that's the reason why you need to be able to have access from the backside and as far as the um, decking goes the reason why it needs to be cantered levered for two reasons one is if the water is coming over during a storm it's able to access the splash pad, splash pad gain access and, and then and, and vent or, or flush out to the ocean the second reason is is that if you need to go through that easement to be able to gain access to a further wall down, we need to have it. And the problem in the past is people have built literally up to the wall. Makes sense, 
But now, given the dynamics of economies and, and storms, we need to have people to be aware of that so that when they build their deck, they can't or leave it. doesn't mean that they can't go that far, but if it means that the town has to gain access, you have to pick it up or at least have pull the boards off so we can get there. And that's, that's the reason why the town needs it. So I understand that. I, my reason for this one was, you know, if, if we own the wall, which we do, and we're replacing it, then we need it. And, and, and we're going to work our way towards it. I just, I'm a little concerned given, given the amount that they're looking for that at this point, if we can get a limited easement, it makes sense. But going forward, as I said, if Mr. Farrington's wall is getting replaced, I'd be the full wall, I'd be like, or a significant portion of it, I'd be like, Mr. Farrington, you have to give it up. But okay, so how do we need to word this? How do we need to do this motion so that we can do what we just discussed? Let me see. Would you ordinarily read the order of taking? And can you therefore insert the word limited into the order of taking? You've a suggested motion that doesn't say yeah, that. But we want to, Tricia, you were suggesting that we pass it. You have to read the whole order? Because that, that way you would have to reconvene no, if there's I won't, a change. No, I don't think you should vote. I think you should table it to your next meeting pending uh, consultation with town council. And then if we can do it, we'll have a revised instrument for you. So I would just table it. Okay. With the understanding with the understanding if we get a, a quick answer back. Then we'll notify the board to have and we can call a quick yeah. meeting. I think that's just the yeah. safest way to do it. Um, could I, uh, there's a, another avenue which might be easier for the board and would enable us to, in the interim, begin to move forward also, would be to have the homeowner uh, grant the easement um, uh, for the purposes described here, grant the permanent easement for the purposes described here rather than have to go through the order of taking, which is, which is a time consuming and, and could be potentially expensive legal wise. Right. What I would suggest is let's, let's talk to town council. If a limited works, great. He can sign off on the easement, limited easement, and it's done. We don't need to do an order of taking. We're done. Right. You don't have to come back to the board. Okay. And if I can address one issue. Too. Yes. Um, the work that went on a couple of years ago in that seawall section, we've kind of come up with a newer design, seeing how some of the walls have been destroyed, how they're undermined. And this 10-foot easement encompasses actually a special stone pad there that's designed to drain the water as the water goes over without causing erosion. So that would go back out the wall as opposed to it's not, it, we do need it for access to clean the rocks or replace any rocks or fix anything that's damaged. But there's a permanent structure behind that wall that you could almost consider part of the wall itself. So just, just for clarity, I know it was, it was brought up by... Um, All right, so we'll table this, and John, if you can get together with Mr. Farrington and Town Council and Perfect. Brian. Thank you. Great. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you, Thank Kevin. you very much. Thank you, Al. Item number six is discussion vote for a hawker peddler's license, and we'll start first with the uh, Sugar Shack ice cream truck. <coughs> Just want to sell it pretty bad. They've been here for a couple hours. <laughs> Should do that for a couple of hours. Lisa Hello. Finnegan, how are you? Good, how are you? Good. Uh, Lisa, Lisa and Sarah Finnegan, 65 Washington Street, Hanover. Uh, we're looking to attain a Hawker and Peddler's license for our ice cream truck. Right, and you sent us pictures of it. Yeah. And I guess there's a little story behind it, too, where you did this years ago and you're passing it along. And yes, so. Um, when I was in high school, uh, a couple years ago, I owned an ice cream truck, uh, had a good time, made uh, cash, good for college. Fast forward to 16 years, I have uh, my daughter Sarah, uh, I just bought an ice cream truck for, and we like to do this um, in situ. It's our family, soon, ho hopefully our family business. And Kim, there's one license available still? This is the final one. This is the final ice cream truck yeah. license. Any well, just out of curiosity, why situate if you live in, in Hanover? Just um, your well, two I grew towns up in over. My, oh, you did? My okay. husband grew up in situate. Our family right. still lives in situate. Ex you need to say no more. <laughs> you understand? I just want to know the nexus to, to situate. <laughs> no beaches in Hanover. <laughs> do, you have, do you have music on your. <laughs> we do. We have country music. Good. Country, that's okay. Country that's music. much better. <laughs> all right. Let's all motion quick know. before we. <laughs> uh, motion, Mr. Chairman? Please. Uh, do we affect, do, uh, 
before I make the motion, as far as locations, they can go same as everywhere else, yeah, right? Do you know the, the rules, the 15 minute? To the, uh, to the Hawker yeah. Just stay away from the stores that sell. Yes, and That's we all. have that footprint. Yeah. That tells so us drive where we slowly help. and, um, you know, the 15 minute rules, all the beaches, and this, we ask if there's already one there that, you, that we don't inundate a spot, and, you know, you'll get used to it. Motion? Move the Board of Selectmen vote to grant the Hawker Peddlers license to Lisa Fedigan, DBA, Sugar Shack, LLC, 65 Washington Street, Hanover, for a mobile food service truck selling wrapped ice cream products in accordance with all regulations set forth in Hawker Peddlers Policy Number 53-12. Second. Second by Mr. Harris. Further discussion? Good All luck. in favor? Good luck. Aye. Good, Good luck. luck. Very much. Unanimous for nothing. Good luck. Thank you. Move on to the next one, which is a uh, Hawker Peddler's license for uh, Daniel Twig. So Good evening. For us right now. Chairman, Selectman. There we go. Um, it's upside down. Thank you. Looking for a, uh, a spot to sell uh, prints and bags and printed materials. Down uh, in Cole Parkway area. Great. And what sort of apparatus are you going to have? I'm um, going to ha have um, like a cart with a tent over it type of thing. Movable, so you'd bring it in and bring it out? Yes. Oh, yes. And how often do you plan on doing it? Uh, Thursday mornings through so Saturday, Saturday mornings. Nine to, nine to noon-ish. Great. And I see you are out of the 300-foot yep. radius. Um, Kim, did we already give a food? Yep. Yeah. One for that area? So I guess the question is, I don't, I don't know that it's an issue yet, but we don't want to have another market down there. I don't think two vendors are certainly going to no, do that. They're not going to compete with it, each other, but you know, certainly something to take into consideration. Um, any discussion from the board? Um, just two points. One is you might think about going to Sunday because you got um, traffic coming That's off the boats. You, you're saying like Saturday. I was thinking um, Sunday would be good. And, and I would I would say from a business perspective, I hope you're very successful to consider maybe renting a place on Front Street. What you have to offer is certainly something that I think would be a ben benefit to the businesses um, as a merchant in the future. In order to get there, though, you need to make sure that you've got the the audience and the uh, the basis for it. Doing the prints for about a year now. So I I, I wish you well in your endeavor. I, I'd like to see you do well to the point where you become a full fledged merchant. Uh, to help the um, the merchants on Front Street. Only one other uh, concern I have is, what if there's an event going on there? You know, sometimes there's band concerts or that sort of stuff. Do, do we want to, because it can get very congested down there. There's not a lot of area for people to sit. Um, what are your thoughts on having the vending things there during the, I mean, it only happens a couple times a summer. I think the vending, I think the concerts are at seven to at night for the most part. I don't. I know you have the Heritage Days uh, little carnival in the back. You know what I mean? You have right. a certain amount of space taken there, but I, I don't see it in, in conflict with, with Cole Parkway with the, with, with the music for any reason. I'm trying to think if there's anything else that goes on down there. And you only want to be there from 8 a.m. till noon? Well, that was my first, my first thought, to just, just to be there in the mornings. Um, uh, it's maybe to 1 o'clock. And I wanted to see how business went in that area, try to feel it out. I mean, you can always, so I mentioned, yeah. you can always cut the hours back. I right. mean, right. You, you know, you may not have much luck coming forward to us in August and saying you want another four hours. But if you're, if, and I'm not suggesting what you do, you can do anything you want. But if you say eight to four and you decided eight to noon is sufficient, then you just close up at noon, I think. 
Right. So I think if you went to four, it wouldn't be a problem with it being concerts. No. What about the carnival? That's a good point. That's the one. That's the one weekend thing. One so weekend just thing. Yeah. So you'd have to move. Yeah. yeah exactly. <coughs> in other words, I wouldn't want to be there during carnival time, anyways. Yeah. It's a quality product, and yeah. the idea is that uh, you know people going down to boating and people using Situate and like to walk around that area might see something they might like. I think uh, eight till till three would be fine. You see, you can ask for more, but you can't go over. That's the point. Eight four is, you're, you're absolutely right. right. So I'm just only saying that because you, 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 I'm just. 24-hour 24, 24 operation. <laughs> it's your business. I'm not trying to tell you how to do it, but I'm saying if you have quality items that are going to be very good long term, you know, I can see how what you're demonstrating to us are, are things that could turn into a merchant. You could actually find that you've got a big a, a shop that you want. So, anyway. Okay. Well, that would be a, that would be great. A motion? Yeah. motion. So the time would be requesting would be eight until four. Okay. And you want to go through Sunday, Thursday through Sunday? Yeah, Thursday through Sunday. Move, motion, Mr. Chairman. Please. Move the board of selectmen vote to grant uh, a hawker's pedal license to Daniel Twig, 22 Collier Road, for a car to replace the Cole Parkway uh, in the bandstand area. Uh, exact location to be determined by the police department traffic enforcement officer and the boards of selectmen to sell photographs, prints, and handcraft canvas bags in accord with, accord with the, accordance with the, all regulations set in the Hawkins Peddlers Policy 53-12. Second. Second by Mr. Harris. Further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye, Aye. it's unanimous. Good, Good luck. luck, Mr. Twig. Move on to item number seven, which is a presentation from the library grant and fundraising initiatives. That would look nice up here, Mr. Twig. <laughs> we, we need some photographs up here. <laughs> He wasn't biting, John. <laughs> <laughs> Good evening. Thanks for coming in and weathering the storm. Thanks for having us. Um, Mary Ellen Gaziano, I'm the Library Board of Trustee Chairperson. Kathleen Baxter, 14 Fay Road, co chair of the Library Capital Campaign. Uh, Les Ball, 40 Driftway, also co chairman of the Library Capital Campaign. Mary Ellen, just to your address. Sorry, 36 Huey Road. Right. Well, thanks for coming in. We got your packet. We all read it. We've actually spoken, you've probably spoken with one of us at some point in time over the last six months. Um, I'll turn it over to you and let you guys do a little presentation, and then we'll come back with any questions or concerns that we have. So Great. take it away. I'll start. Um, so as you know, and you're very well aware, we've been be here before with our presentation when we went for the feasibility study. Um, we went through a rigorous process, and the town approved the feasibility study, and um, the application for the library renovation and expansion. Um, so our project is in queue with the state um, and ready to go in the very near future. And we feel like it's our time, and if we don't capture our time now, we don't know when it's gonna come around again. It could be many, many years. Um, so our coming here tonight is in response to the town administrator's suggestion that we address you and put on public record that we are ready to um, to start our capital campaign for the renovation project. So we have a large campaign committee and it's comprised of a variety of community members. Um, we've put in many hours and a lot of effort over the past three to four years actually. Um, and as you also are aware, we're awaiting the release of funds from a $5 million grant in hopefully the fiscal year 13 or fiscal year 14. Um, when we applied for the grant, the friends of the library, the trustees and the foundation um, we had already gathered $275,000 that we put in with the grant application process. And the MBLC was very impressed by that, that we already had that backing of the community. And we feel that that was a great response of why we are up on the list so high. Um, so a private committee has formed to raise money to augment the grant. Um, so the grant that we're hoping to get from the state, or th that the state has told us we would get $5 million, and we're hoping to raise another $5 million um, with our capital campaign. 
Um, so we've been actively soliciting funds since January, and we have nothing but positive feedback from everybody that we've talked to, very excited about the project. Um, and we are fast approaching a half a million dollars with, before even going public with our campaign, which is very exciting. Um, so all the hard work is really starting to pay off. Um, so in addition to the fundraising, we're exploring other options, such as going to CBC and seeing how our, um, to see if any funds could, for part of the project, could come through the CPC. Um, there's a list of capital projects that have been submitted to the town administrator, such as replacement of the roof and the sliding glass doors, um, restrooms in the parking lot. And if you look at all of those combined, they actually come close to the $2 million that we'd be asking the town for part of the renovation project. So um, it just seems like it would work um, to our benefit to get a, a, a great new state-of-the-art building instead of just trying to patch what we have. Um, Caroline, one quick question. Sure. So in the $12 million that you have, that includes repair of the roof, renovating the bathrooms, all of the repair work that will probably have to be done over the next decade in the building anyway. are in that proposal. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Um, so we're holding a press conference at the library to officially announce a capital campaign on Monday, May 21st at 2.30. And we'd like to invite anybody that would like to attend. We've got um, the media coming and our own um, town TV show. And um, this is our library, so come check it out. <laughs> May 21st. May 21st at 2.30. 2.30. All right. Did the two of you have anything to add, or do you want us to kind of? Oh, you can ask your questions. Okay. We're, yeah. we're Just for those who haven't seen the plan, essentially what's happening is the footprint of the library is staying the same, but there's really a big addition going off one of the, off the back. So where the youth books are now, it's going back to the field. Mm -hmm. um, and it's. It's quite big. I don't know what the square footage is, but it's uh, big glass windows and um, an airy big ceiling and sort of stuff. Um, so we it are looks going like for lead certification for the, um, you know, with the solar panels and everything on right. top of that. So it looks so like it's adding about a third, no, about about 50 percent of the space, about. Probably more. Third. Um, a third. What is that, Kathy? It's about 35 percent. 35%. 35% increase. And um, <laughs> the only other question I had, so is it going down to the, I think it is going down to the basement level as well. Yeah, that, there's, a, there's a whole area there that's unusable at the, at the current time. Yeah, and that was so my that question. Why is that all of a sudden usable when we put an addition on? Well, you know, I, I, I'm not a, a construction person, so I can't tell you that. But we, we're going to be able to put egress uh, uh, capabilities in there, which we don't have now. Uh, we'll be able to do more heating and ventilation stuff in, in that space as well. And by the way, it, it provides a very nice functional meeting room that you could have your selectmen's meetings in, which would be much larger than this. Well, the advisory committee does meet there. There's a lot of people do. Yeah. But the, that space down there, there's a ton of space down there in the in the basement that is underutilized right now. Mm -hmm. So is there any specific changes happening in that space that make that, like why can't we use that now? Well, you could if you put a lot, a lot of money in it. Right, so are there the functional increase to the current space is what, heat? Heat, right. air conditioning, uh, the, uh, oh, oh, to that specific space? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, heat, air conditioning, and egress. Okay. <coughs> and then obviously the space under the wing right. the, that may have more better lighting or yeah mm -hmm. we'll have about 32,000 uh, square feet when we get finished and uh, I think we've got uh, 12,000 uh, currently on the top floor and uh, about half of that on the bottom floor that we can now use right. so the the plan is as I read it you're hoping to get a five million dollar grant from the state you're hoping to raise five million dollars through your fundraising and you're hoping that the town will, will contribute $2 million to, make, to, to pay for the full amount. Um, and again, as we were talking earlier in the evening regarding the Senior Center, you know, this is, all of this conversation is going on right now in terms of the master plan that we're looking at all the buildings and the uses of all of them. So, you know, it, you know you're kind of looking at this as outside, as your own little thing, and we're looking at it as, as encompassed in everything that's going on in the building, in the, 
in the town right now. So it, you know, I guess the timing is pretty good as we look at big picture stuff, and different services that we can provide and what's going to happen to them. I, I, that's my. I opinion. can speak to that a bit if you'd like in regards to your description of this project as a separate project. No, I, I mean, I, I think I think your that's your focus. Yes, it is. Our yeah. focus is the library, the senior center, town hall, and everything. And that's, you know, when we get together and we talk about it, the library's got one of the post-it notes on the wall, too, that says, okay, what are we going to do with the library, mm -hmm. and how can that be incorporated to, to all this? So, and luckily, is, because of town resources and the process that's, that was approved prior to this most recent discussion about the master plan, some of the questions pertaining to the library have been answered thanks to town resources towards the feasibility study the approval of the grant process. So there is, a, as Mary Allen is addressing, there is a certain process that is already in place because the state recognized the high quality grant proposal that was submitted. And so that $5 million is coming our way right now. And according to the Massachusetts Library Construction Grant Program, which is an admirable program in the nation, this is our window of opportunity. So we're looking to address some of the very questions that have been facing the town all along, and we feel very fortunate that we have a ready-to-go project that will help address some of the needs. Yeah. I, I imagine that it's good and bad because you have the challenge of raising $5 million in a short period of yes, time. Yes, and well. that's, that's our best effort goal we, because we do, we are very aware of what the town is going to be facing down the road. That is something that factors into our discussions each time we meet. And right now, we do feel it is our obligation to put forth that best effort so that we can minimize the town's responsibility and augment this $5 million grant with another $5 million. I think, I think we were well aware of the fact that uh, there was a lot of other needs on the table. And so our idea was to, to get this $5 million from the state, we needed to put a, an effort together to, to help uh, uh, the town uh, put up their fair share too. So uh, we talked about lower amounts as goals and we decided we were going to go for a fairly aggressive uh, goal. I will tell you that we have not had one person that we've asked for money say no to us. Uh, we have not received the, the large get, get gift yet, <coughs> which we hope we will at some point, but we've received some very substantial gifts that we're very, very happy with. And so we are pushing 500,000. We've got two people uh, who have told us they've given us something very quickly, and so we're, we're hopefully going to have some good numbers to come. Just that, Les Ball, could you, just, could you just give your address for, I don't know if uh, Kim has it. 40 Driftway. There you go. Sorry. Norton, just so we have yeah, uh, yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. And I, I guess I'm going to try to speak, and I spoke to, to some of the members before about the realities of it, and, and mm -hmm. it's yes. a great program, uh, yeah, and uh, certainly no one's against it. But I think the realities speak this way. We had a group in tonight, the Senior Center, and this was the realities for the board as well as everybody. Probably <laughs> if that went the override route to build a new city, because we certainly don't have the funds to do it, if that went the override route, the last number we saw for a senior center f was around 2.7 million. A couple of years ago, it's probably 3 million now. Uh, so there's a $3 million override within the next, if this went forward, uh, within the next couple of years, <clears throat> which would probably be combined with your override. Now, I don't think you'd have an override in 2014, another override in 2015 another one in 2016. I think it would all be doomed if you did it that way. So they'd probably be co combined to, let's say, a $5 million override. That's a tough hurdle to, to, to put forward to the town in this day and age. I think we all recognize that. Which leads me to my next question. <clears throat> if only $3 million was raised, out of the out of the five million dollar uh, goal, would the town be asked for that extra two million? Because of the grant application process yeah. and the state's release of the monies of that five million dollars, yeah. 
we would we are right now bound to that twelve million dollar project because this yep. is the process that was followed this is the information that's been put forth so one thing that's that's really positive about the timing of this is that we are able to come before you where we are able to have discussions with several individuals around town to gather as much information as possible and the capital campaign committee in conjunction with the foundation and the trustees at some point will be able to assess where we're at with this campaign and then we'll be able to inform accordingly you know right now we are not asking for a special town meeting we're we're just announcing we're in the, the throes agree. of this capital campaign and I think we're the way that we are undergoing our process we are going to be able to stay informed all along the way and and be able to kind of turn the Titanic if we need to. Um, I understand, but, but again, my question, again, you understand if, my question? Yes, my question was so, that $5 million override that I just spoke about could be a $6 million override. And again, in, I, th I think reality. right now it could, could it okay. could, but so it's too soon to, to call it. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Because we're just, just announcing. Saying, I am just saying it could. Yes, and, and again, um, these. Spirit of openness, uh, as we try so hard. Uh, yes, and that's what's so important. And so we are calling forth, uh, we have a call out for all kinds of scenarios because we're, we're wrestling with the varied landscape. But again, as Les was referring, to the esteem with which individuals hold the value of the library in the life of this town, we just continue to feel obligated that in our role we have to put our best Absolutely. effort forward. <clears throat> Absolutely, and that's and why. Then, I, um, and, I, and I think people recognize that. If there's so. any organization that probably can raise that kind of money, it may very well be the library. Uh, and I recognize that. I think that in the library is held in high esteem for good reason because it does such a great job. I'm just putting this forth as yes. these are the realities. Oh, it's of, help. Of, of, it's, of, it's 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 helpful. There. It's duly noted. I think it would be and, a good uh, idea. And I think you've got the people on board to help with that yeah, assessment. I think it would be a good idea that somewhere during the process, six months from now, uh, you come back to the board and say we have raised 4.5 million. Oh, we have raised 6.8. 6.8. <laughs> and again, you know, I, I, Even better. I think, Mr. Norton, you've, you've actually identified the beauty of the process. Um, we, we actually would have to do that. Yeah. You know, we, we have to report all along because we are preparing for acceptance or not from yep. the town. Thank you. Sean, two things. Um, <clears throat> this plan doesn't really conflict with the plans that we have for the COA building behind that right no it goes out the other All right, other direction okay and it was a couple of years ago I thought Kathy and maybe I, I don't know who came before us and we were talking about closing libraries and having other towns combine you know yeah. could we reach out to a neighboring town that might not be in the position that we're in and maybe ask them to <laughs> You know, I mean, well, well again, I, I'll, I, don't think I can hurt. begin the answer to that, but then I, I respectfully defer to our chair of the trustees. I think that conversation um, was a result of discussion that was occurring at the state level right. when the governor was putting out the call for towns, munis municipalities to be considering regionalization. Um, that point did not factor into the feasibility study. That need really hasn't come before the capital campaign. Um, that would be a matter for the trustees at this. But that's a good point, Sean. I mean, because those conversations did happen where operations yeah. would have to combine and. But it did not uh, factor into the grant process. No, So you no, see no, what no. I'm saying? Okay. So right. the, the grant was approved. Based on what? Based on, on your efforts. Right. That's on right. Situa yeah. Right, yeah. right. Yeah. I think you're taking all the right steps. I think you're, you know, and you're, you're having success at each level so far. Now you've got the two biggest challenges ahead of you. A, can I raise $5 million? And B, will the town front the difference? You know, so you've got the state behind you and, you know, good luck with your, with your endeavor and we'll deal with, you know, it's, it's silly for us to sit here and pontificate on what's going to happen. We just, you know, keep in touch with us and let us know where we are and, you know, we'll take the next steps. Although I think a great name for that library would be 
the Sean Harris <laughs> oh. <laughs> Library. We, of course, agree. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> I'm sure it's going to cost me, Tony. Thanks. <laughs> Page nine. Just six point eight million. <laughs> It'll be yours. <laughs> it's getting hot in here. <laughs> Just. One other observation. I know I talked to Les on Saturday a little bit. As you know, we've talked about this master plan, strategic plan. I, I hope that there is at least one or two people, Kathy, or one of your uh, members to participate in it. In the event, and I don't want to be the naysayer here, in the event that something doesn't go the way that you envision and it fails, and granted the building's there, we are trying to think of a bigger picture too. So at least participate in the dialogue and the discussion for Gates Middle School and what it could be and whether it's something that could be beneficial, maybe, maybe not. But I hope you at least consider it as another potential option going down the road. That's all. Great. Thank you. Great. Thank you all. And Thank you. Again, Thank you. it's May 21st? Yes, 2.30 yes. at the library. Does anyone need a break? Yes. Do you mind? Let's, we're going to take a two-minute break. And Thank you, Mary Allen. Thank you. Mary Allen, how are you? Yes. Nice to meet Good. you. Good. Thank you. Huh? Yeah, I don't know why I didn't, I didn't read the email off. Yeah. He's the director of media relations. He Survey. No, 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 you know, you might be, yes, I think you're doing very well. But How do you shut it off, Sean? I never shut it off. Sean shuts it off all the time. My husband. I'll tell yeah, well, I read the survey. I get to get on show that, and that was great. Uh huh. Yeah. What did you teach? Okay. Okay. Oh, wow. Wow. I don't know what I'll tell him I'm not. Whatever happens. Okay. Nice to meet you. All right. Anything that you can help. I met with Kelly and Mara. Yeah. So it's either going to be end up up here. Or a lot of money will be put in that building. Yeah. Make it. Thank you so much. It'd be nice because what's inside of it? The people that are inside of it are great. It's from the name. Oh, yeah. So, so it's, you know, either way it's going to end up a winner, but it just may take. Um, um, Ryan Lynch, he's the English department chair. Yes, yeah. yeah. Um, he was on jury duty a couple of weeks ago in, in Frank's court, not in his court, but in his building. He comes in and he goes, Do you guys talk about who's got the worst building? <laughs> yeah, he, uh, where, was Frank, where was he? Brockton, he's Brockton, Superior. He wins. Yeah, that's what he said. He said, I think he's, I think he's a success. You understood what I was trying to say there, I hope. You know what I mean? Yes. I'm, not, I'm just trying to bring reality into it. You know, it's Which not, you have to do. Well, sometimes people come in and they make these presentations, and we, being politicians, go, oh, it's wonderful, go for it, go for that. And then a year from now, they come back in, and we say no. You know what I mean? Because, so, just the, the reality of it is, you know, and as far as raising the five million, I look at it, that's your job. You know what I mean? I, I don't yeah. know whether it's possible or not. It's, it's healthy, but that's, you know. Yeah, it's a big goal. It's a big goal, but, yeah. It's it'll exciting, work. though. I hope it, um, I hope it'll it work. Because I think the biggest thing is to get going. If, if it can be. Uh, Zach, this isn't on, is it? Zach, um, is this on?
which is a discussion vote of the fiscal year 2012 departmental transfers. Um, okay, so um, I included a detailed memo in the board's um, packet. In May and June of any given fiscal year, we can, the municipalities are permitted to transfer funds between line items to satisfy from surplus amounts to accounts that they have identified um, deficits in. Um, those require a vote of the Board of Selectmen and of the Advisory Committee. Usually I do this in June because that's almost the end of the fiscal year. Um, and that's when we've done it in the past, but there are two uh, items that we need to transfer funds into right away. Um, so we're in May, the window now, and um, the board is scheduled to approve these tonight and advisory is meeting Thursday night. I can't attend advisory Thursday night, but Joe has agreed to go and if any of the board members are there um, because there's a fairly significant amount of money here. Um, so the first one, is uh, a transfer in the conservation department. Um, and as I was reading the notes that I wrote last Friday, this is only one of a two-part transfer you're gonna have to do, one we need to do right away, and you'll see another one in June. So you will expect to see other transfers in June like you do every year, um, but this is a two-fold one. Um, what happened is when, this is a budgetary error that was voted at the annual town meeting a year ago, April, um, in terms of what was required to fund the Conservation uh, Commission personal salaries line item and the purchase of services line item. And, um, I do, and when um, I was told there was a shortfall in the count, Meg and I went back and looked at it and discovered that it's been in the budget since it was originally approved. And what happened was um, from the, when the budget submitted, and as you know, I have to submit the budget to you in December, so all the budgetary figures have to be into me in November. Um, there was a vacancy in the Conservation Commission. The budget had already been submitted for review for FY12, and then um, we didn't have permanent people in that position until April, um, right April 1st of um, 2011. So. What happened is we went 20 hours a week with um, Jim O'Connell as our conservation natural resources officer. We reorganized and 20 hours a week with Paul Shea for his wetlands expertise on a contracted basis. That never shook out in terms of how the money was allocated and voted at town meeting. It all went into personal services instead of splitting personal services from 40 hours to 20 and then the, the balance going into Paul. So consequently, there's a shortfall of about $40,000 between the accounts, but what we need to do right now is take available funds in the personnel services line item and conservation and transfer it into purchase of services so we can pay Paul through June 30th. And again, there'll be another 20,000 that you'll see before the end of the year. I think, I'm sure it's gonna be less, which is why I'm not giving you the whole amount. So I'd ask um, for you to approve that motion now and then we can get on to the next item and I'm happy to answer any questions on that. Motion. Yeah, so just so I understand, right now it was just in the wrong bucket. Yeah. We're just correcting the buckets. Yeah. At the end, in June, there may be a shortfall yeah. which we'll deal with when we yeah. get there. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Motion. Please. Move the Board of Selectmen <coughs> approve the transfer of $20,808 from Conservation Commission Personal Services into Conservation Commission Purchase of Services. Uh, and from support staff training, the sum of $20,382 into purchase of services. Second. Second. <laughs> Second by Mr. Harris. Further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 It is unanimous, 4 0. And the second one? Okay, the second one is um, that the town received the arbitration award from the Joint Land Management Committee on April 13th. That award covers the contract period from July 1st, 2009 to June 30th, 2013. So it covers a four year period. Um, and as the board's aware, and I will, uh, for the, the folks at home, um, when a community, when labor and management enter into the joint labor management pr process, they're bound to support um, the award that the arbitrator gives. The only way not to support that award is if it would go to town meeting. Town meeting voted down the funding. So um, both parties, i.e. the Board of Selectmen and the Fire Union, 
uh, need to support the award that the arbitrator gave unless for some reason an appropriation isn't made at town meeting. Um, we are not going to go to a town meeting to make um, these, the, um, to, to fund the, the, the contract award and um, I think we talked about this right before town meeting that we had identified some sums of money so that FY13 um, could at least start out of the gate even though we didn't um, know the, the, uh, the, you know, what the final arbitration award would be. So what you're doing now is you are going to transfer funds and I gave John an amended motion um, from the one you have in your book to transfer funds to cover um, FY10 was a 0%, so there's no impact to the town there. That award was in keeping with the patent for the, the rest of the town unions. And um, FY11 was a 1.5%, FY12 was 2%, and FY13 was 2%, plus rolling the, on average, I think $2,000 EMT stipend into the base salary, which will pyramid on overtime and other roll-ups. So, for FY, the accounting office has been calculating the retro amounts, and the FY11 retro amount is just under $48,000, and the FY12 amount uh, is $113,000. Um, we can't project the exact number to June 30th because we have three more months with overtime, and then we will deal with FY13 at a special town meeting in the fall. We did appropriate some money at the special town meeting um, to do this. I mean, not the special town meeting, the annual town meeting um, last month, um, but that will not be able to fund the total amount of the FY13 cost because the stipend is being rolled into the base um, and the FY13 amount is somewhere in excess of $200,000. We have some of that funded, um, probably about 130000 um, but again, it will fall short and so we have to do it at the special town meeting in the fall. So Meg and I have identified where we believe the surplus amounts will be so we can affect the retro amount to the firefighters who obviously would want to get made whole as soon as possible. I met with the fire union and Rich is here. I thought Rich is here and so, um, so we can work with accounting to get those retro amounts out. So. Um, the funds that we've identified, and I, I really want to be clear about this, and I know the board is, the, fire, the police department has a surplus amount in the personal salaries, and that is because we have police positions that have not been filled yet. Um, these are not the funds that were provided under the override. They were existing funds. Um, we, are in, we have hired those two officers, but they have not gone to the academy yet, so they're not on payroll yet, so that's an identified surplus of just under 100000 we have in the police department budget to transfer over to fire department personal services to pay that ret those retro amounts that I just told that pretty much for FY11 and FY12 are on the order of about 160000 Even purchasing the... Um, building the new salt shed in the DPW with the um, surplus we have in snow and ice this year, we can take $14,000 from that. In doing transfers interdepartmentally in May and June, there is a limit on how much money you can transfer out of account. It's 3%. So for instance, let's say I had $200,000 in a line item. The most that I could transfer out of that line item is $6,000. So um, even though there may be even more in snow and ice after the salt shed is bid and built, um, I can only transfer that amount there. And then we have a small surplus um, in unemployment that I'm transferring. So when you total all those numbers together, 96,970 from police personal services, 14,594 from snow and ice, and 9,000 for unemployment, um, that totals 120,564. That'll cover all of FY11 and FY12 to date and based on our projection of overtime year to date uh, for the rest of this year. And then we have enough money to get FY13 rolling to the special town meeting in October. So I'm happy. It's kind of confusing, but we're borrowing from several sources to fund it. But um, again, these are s surpluses we project for June 30th. Now, one quick question. The we had for 11, 
and 12, a $161,000 estimate, and we're only funding 120. Yes, but I'll come back to you in June 40. to do the, So yeah. the rest of it's yeah. gonna happen once yeah. we know the real numbers yeah. in, in June, okay. Yeah. Actually, it's 113 for FY11. Did I do a typo No, no, you there? did 48 and 11 and 113 and 12. Yeah, it, 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 it should be fine. Yeah, so we got yeah. about 160. We're funding about 120 of it right now. Yeah. And in June, we'll figure out yeah. if, it, if the rest of it is yeah. really 40 and what, how we're going to get it. Where are you? Wait, I want to make sure. Tony, where are you getting your figures? From your, um, your um, what you just said. What you submit, your memorandum. Unless, are you funding 11 from other funds? No, I'm, what you should be funding, right, you got it, that's right. And then the difference is 20,000, you're right. Difference is 40,000. 40, 40, yep. yep. So we'll figure, but that's an estimate because we don't know what overtime is. I'd rather, I don't want to have you appropriate money and take it until I know what the year end overtime is and then we'll just do it. And then I'll have a better idea if we have surpluses in other accounts. Right, so we're getting the majority of it now from these three sources, right. police, snow and ice, and unemployment. Right. And we'll deal with the other 40. Yeah. A couple couple weeks. Great. Motion, please. Move the Board of Selectmen approve the transfer of ninety six thousand nine hundred and seventy dollars from the Police Department Personal Services into the Fire Department Personal Services and or any other related fire line items to affect payment of the arbitration <laughs> award. These surplus funds are there because the two police officers we hired um, and were funded in FY twelve are not in the academy yet. There are not they or there are not override funds and further that the Board of Selectmen approve, approve and transfer $14,594 from snow and ice and 9000 for non-employment into the Fire Department Personal Services and or any other related Fire Department light items to affect payment of the arbitration award. Second. Second by Mr. Harris. Further discussion? Seeing none. All in favor? Aye. Aye. It's unanimous four to zero. Moving on to item number nine, which is the gate feasibility study and the next steps. Okay, so um, this is to bring you up. Um, <laughs> one of the things about the annual town meeting is everybody starts calling about money that's approved for FY13, and we still have to put FY12 to bed. But we've been getting a lot of phone calls about um, next steps for gates and when is the facilities manager going to be hired and what is the ESCO going to do. So. Um, we're trying to deal with that and as we just did try to close out FY12 so things are a little heady but um, I just want to take some time to go over the memo that um, I included for the board um, to talk about the funds that were approved at the April town meeting and also where we are with Gates given that um, the funds were approved at town meeting and the ESCO and things like that. So just to recap for the board 60,000 was approved for CPC funds um, to conduct uh, uh, a, s a building analysis, structural analysis of the historical portions of the Gates School. So the 1912-1931, mostly where you see brick if you looked at the building head on, not the gym, not the C wing, I mean the, um, the little building to the right. We hired um, Durkee Brown out of um, Rhode Island to do that study and as you remember they did uh, a preliminary conditions report, determined that the building was structurally sound but really felt they couldn't do the rest of the study because they didn't know what the building would be used for. So we had a meeting with a bunch of stakeholders, the school committee, to see um, you know, what the intent would be of the building long term. That came around the same time as the board was discussing the idea of the master plan for public facilities. So that sort of all fit together. And then ESCO came in at the same time. So we all knew that that would all happen. Um, at the same time. So given that the additional, one of the things Durkee Brown recommended was um, it was hard to look at gates in a vacuum and that really they should do a conditions analysis report for the entire building. So um, what I'm proposing here is twofold because there's still um, about $20,000 left in the CPC money that hasn't been spent because Durkee Brown stopped after they did the initial conditions report. And there is 375,000 approved for um, w services, de design, engineering, 
whatever we need to sort of get more information about the facilities master plan. So the first step um, that I'd be recommending to the board is to use um, the remaining funds, about 19,000, to lay in some programming footprints for the original portion of Gates School that Durkee Brown would do under the original $60,000 for um, the potential to have a town hall, a community center, recreation, senior center in that footprint. Just sort of a few schematics, conceptual. Um, they have the building footprints for existing buildings right now that they could work on. That would be piece one to use the remaining funds. Then the second piece would be to engage them or another firm, uh, hopefully as soon after June for July 1st as possible, to do the rest of the gates building. I think it makes sense since we can't use the CPC money to do the rest of the gates, the 375 that we have um, could be used to do that full conditions analysis for the rest of the building. Jerky Brown has quoted a price of $14,000 to do that additional amount. So, um, so what I'd be looking for the board is direction on telling Durkee Brown to sort of do the additional schematic conceptual stuff for the existing 1912-1930 one piece and then to um, get a bid or I might even be able to do a contract change with them uh, for 14000 to do the rest of Gates. Um, the third and final piece of this is um, we need to um, get a bunch of people in a room and vary stakeholders and sit down and spend a day and talk about all the stuff that's on the table, the seniors' concerns, the middle school parents' concerns, uh, the library concerns, public safety. Get those people in a room. It's called a charrette, and I've explained it in the memo to you, where folks get together and decide not only where they think um, this concept that the board has been floating should go, I mean, you, you can't continue to be sort of the only people out there pushing this. You need to bring in and solicit opinion and feedback about whether people like the idea or they like 80% of it or 40% of it and change it based on sort of the feedback that you get from many, many people in that room. And also to look at potential financing options. Um, what we're talking about is not cheap. And there are some creative ways in revenue that the town um, might want to pursue that should be talked about in a greater group of people as far as how we might want to fund something like that long term. So that's, that's sort of a lot in a nutshell, but what's going to be happening is there's so many moving puzzle pieces here. Um, before you go too much further, other than I think it just makes infinite sense to spend the extra money right away to get the full footprint of Gates. Um, and then get all the stakeholders in a room. And I listed um, all those, those groups that I thought should be included, plus there may be more, and really be, get to be serious about moving this off center now that we have the 375 and the ESCO money. Great. Yeah, I think that's a great idea. Um, the charrette, I've never used that word before, but I like it. Um, the only other thing that I'd s suggest is that maybe we can um, also look at the school portion. I, I don't know. I know that there's some standardized schools, you know, kind of get them working on that side as well, because a lot of this stuff yeah. can go on at the same time and see what can happen in the footprint over here so that if we run into any major obstacles, we'll know right, right off the bat. So um, I don't know if Mar uh, Mike or someone can start going down that path and say, okay, a standard middle school would be blah, 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 and get an engineer say, you can put it there, you can put it here, you can put it over there. Right. And that's what the school and the various parent groups, they know that piece well and it's sort of unique other than the other municipal buildings. Right. But I mean, I think you really need to get a read from a cross section of all these folks who live and breathe and work in these buildings, whether or not, you know, there's widespread support for this plan. I mean, I have some sense you got the 375, but I don't think 100% of what we're proposing might be 100% of what the folks in that room want. And the other piece I think that's very important as we talk about these various buildings is there's no constituency group for the police and fire department and no constituency group for the departments here in town hall in terms of facilities. 
And so that's part of my role to sort of be that constituency group for them as well because we have other pockets of groups in town that really have people we can work with and get their feedback and their interest in what they may want to see in a facility. But the public safety piece and the town hall piece really needs to sort of always be mindful of as well as we solicit from these other groups. Is there, we could start this right away, right? I mean, we don't, the funding doesn't come available till July. Right, so, so but we certainly could right. have the meetings. We could use the old money and we could set up for July 1st to start looking at the new sections of gates and I'll speak with Mike Hayes and see what steps they can do initially to get ready to look at some sort of school structure. Right, and that's why I wanted to talk to you tonight because we can authorize Durkee Brown to do the, the CPC piece because mm -hmm. we still have those funds and then I can get you know a bid, a contract in place for July 1 for the rest of gates. The only thing is I would like to have the charrette as soon as possible with the facilitator, again with funds from the 375, except we're heading into June and July, August now, which, which is sort of the, the death spiral for meetings for people because everybody takes off. So I suggested September, but there might be, like you said, some informal things that we can do in between to just say this is what we want to do or at least um, get some public information. I see Jen back there. Um, to notify their groups that this is what we're planning because I you know I, I think it really needs to be a process where there's a lot of solicitation a lot of consensus um, so we we really know that you know we have the support to go forward and not be halfway through and find out nobody really wants the Recreation Commission to leave the high school or something like that yeah I agree with you 100% I, I don't think we should wait until September though you know, I think if we do it before the school year's out in the beginning of ju uh, June, maybe we could get those groups together before vacation things start kicking in place. And there maybe end up being three of those meetings, but at least you get the preliminary one in place and get the ball moving. Um, maybe we could pick sometime in the beginning of June to have a... Well, we can try. I mean, if you talk to Mike and uh, we sort of can talk to the... Well, you have the list here. I'll chairs, you know, we'll yeah, the chairs of those stakeholders. And again, there might be more than you've identified. Yeah. So I'll go through this with you and, okay. and we can kind of pick and choose who we, who we get in touch with or all of us can and see if we can't get, I mean, we kind of have momentum now because the town did well, support it. Well, it's your so momentum. Right. We need to make it. Well, that's what I mean. Well, there was, you know, 302 people at town meeting, so they, 250 of them but liked it. Um, so why don't we get that, uh, we'll see if we can get that going. Great. So do we have to authorize the, you need a motion no, or something? I no, I just. No, because you've already yeah. awarded the contract, so I want to tell you how I was going to do the rest of it. And then if I have to do a separate contract for the rest of Gates, I'll bring that to you. But I'm pretty sure I can just do Okay, so an are we addendum. in agreement that she should proceed with the use of the space in the historical parts of Gates? Yes. Yes, absolutely. absolutely. All right. Move on to item number 10. Is that it? Yeah. Great. Any questions from uh, Jen or anyone else? Great. Um, item number 10 is to accept the resignation. Will the Board of Selectmen vote to accept the resignation of Richard F. Faust from the Situate Veterans Council? Second. Second by Mr. Harris. Um, any discussion? He wrote a letter to us uh, saying it's just his personal life has gotten too busy and um, he's not able to make the meetings and he's going to step down. So thank you, Richard, for attempting. All those in favor? Aye. 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 It's unanimous. Four to zero. Did the Board of Selectmen vote to accept the resignation of Monty Newman from the Cable, cable Television Committee? And further, that the Board thank Mr. Newman for serving as Chairman and for volunteering his time and expertise to this committee. Second. Second by Mr. Nanny. Again, he wrote a letter. He's been on the committee for quite a while, um, and he wishes us luck in taking the next endeavors. He kind of brought us to a first uh, step here, and, um, and I'm sure... Indirectly, he'll help with the rest of the stuff. He's a, a big asset. Yeah, Marty. Marty did a tremendous job. It'll be a big loss. Yeah. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye is unanimous. Four zero. Item number eleven is the town administrator's report. Um. Okay. So an update on the veterans district, which I believe the board wanted to get periodic updates once the council was formed. Um. Uh, the district, as you know, is with the town of Hingham, and we share the personnel. The veteran services director, who is really the veterans agent in Hingham, um, for purposes of the joint district, reports to both the town administrator in Hingham and myself. So we had last 
for Friday, we had the first of, uh, no, I'm sorry, last Thursday, we had the first of what we're going to have is regular meetings to see how the formation of the district's going, what are the challenges, <coughs> how are the claims going, and, and working out some growing pains, because this is a new marriage for both the towns and the personnel, um, and there have been, you know, a few bumps, but we're still driving down the road, and it's getting smoother all the time. Um, I do want to commend our new veterans agent here who's been with us only a very short period of time, Don Knapp, who um, really has been brought up to speed and um, I think is a great addition not only for um, the town hall staff but a resource for veterans in the, in the community. And he's um, always available. And if he's not, Chris Chessy, our clerk, uh, also does a fabulous job, is available in the building 35 hours a week. And should there be nobody, for whatever reason, the staff in the Hingham's Veterans Office is available because they are our staff as well. So um, our claims have grown. We've doubled. Um, I think we have eight or nine now, up from three, um, maybe six months ago. We approved another one today. So that's another budget that we will be looking at through June 30th. So um, even though, like, I could have had you approve more money, I just still want to be cautious through June 30th to see what other transfers okay. we may need to make. Um, so that's all I had there. Um, our customer service mission statement at our last meeting, I talked to you folks about the customer service training. Um, that um, most of the support staff in town hall and department heads are going through. We've had two trainings so far. There's another one Thursday. The last one's May 22nd at Pier 44. And um, as you know, we asked employees to weigh in on what they thought the customer service mission statement was. And you have um, the overwhelming choice. And I don't know, Tony, if you want to read it or. Sure, I'd be honored. Um, to, to provide services and information to the public while promoting excellent customer service, respect, and courtesy to the community of Situa. And I must say, I went to the treasurer's office before the meeting tonight, and they provided all of that to me. So I think we need to get it painted on the wall in a few places. Okay, we'll have it there. stenciled maybe it's, along uh, the wall. So very good. Short and yeah. sweet and to the point. And then uh, the last thing, uh, finally, and I do not want to say too much about this, but I would be remiss in not addressing that um, the newspaper article in the Mariner. Uh, may I break in, Mr. Chairman, respectfully? Uh, where, where we asked, and I understand your, your uh, wanting to, to get out your side, our side, which is uh, absolutely, I just wonder where we asked, where we stopped the gentleman that came in, Mr. Gibbons, because of potential pending litigation. Do we even want to get into that now where it's still pending litigation? I just. Well, let me just clarify. And again, I, I, I understand your concern and it, it's not pending litigation, but what I do want to say and all I want to say is that the town has received a notice of a complaint of an alleged violation of the open meeting law. And the process for the board to respond to that is that they have 14 days to respond to the complainant, which is the situate mariner. And then if the situate mariner is not satisfied with the response, they can file that with the attorney general's office. And so I was just speaking to it, Joe, as a process matter. That's fine. You know, I just didn't want yeah. to get into it now. And right. Yeah, right. right. This is fine. Thank you. Yeah. And yeah. you're 100 percent right. We didn't debate it then. We're not going to discuss it now. This is just facts. Everyone read it in the paper. It was, it was a headline, and um, you know, town council and, and the board are dealing with it, and we'll get a response together right. to, um, to the mariner within the time frame necessary. And um, and as the information pans out, you'll hear more about it. Just want to say one thing. I want to say to Tricia that you know, I speak myself. I presume the board stand behind you 100 percent. These are just accusations. Accusations that are yet to be found uh, um, um, found to be true, and I also want to say that you know whatever the um, the cost that is going to cost the town, it's a shame, but whatever the attorney general's office says, we will abide by. But again, I want to give you 100% support, so that you understand that. Right. That's and all I have to say. Right. And certainly, nothing was intentionally done or deceitfully done, and if we made mistakes, we'll correct them, and if we didn't, we'll expect an apology. Great. Moving on to item number 
12, other business. Oh, other business. Oh. John, any other business? No, that's fine. Right. We have 11A. Oh, we do have 11A. Please. Yeah. We have 11A. Oh, is that in the new? That's in the new amended agenda. Tony, do you have it? Yeah. I would just read the motion. Okay. Move, motion. Go ahead. Move the Board of Selectmen vote to re ratify and approve the, pol the police contract settlement for fiscal years 2010, 2011, 2012, 2013. Is originally voted on November 15, 2011. Second. Second by Mr. Harris. Further discussion? Seeing none. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? None. It's unanimous, four to zero. Now we'll move on to item number 12, other business. Anything? Uh, one th two things. One, uh, I want to say thanks to the DPW Beautification Committee for doing a great job for Ship Shape Day. Uh, wonderful success. They did a lot of hard work. People came out, you know, who took, who take pride in their town and cleaned it up. And they did a great job cleaning up all over the place. You could see the bags, you could see the, the hard work and the, all of the stuff that was uh, picked up. So I commend everybody who came out to do it, took pride in their town, also the town workers, um, and, um, you know, I, phenomenal job every year. And it's getting, I think, more and more popular, which I have to say is a great thing. Sean, you're pointing. I, I, yes, and Tony, if you don't mind, I, I, you know, I, I, I think I said something to Tricia. It's just, it, it's uh, very pleasing to see. There were, I'm sure we saw the bags everywhere. I talked to Tricia and said, is this somehow we could recognize some of these people? You know, Alan Donner are here, and I'm sure others, handing out the bags if somehow, I don't know, it, they signed up or, so I, you know, it's just, I feel bad. I just was too busy. I couldn't help out, but it's just very nice to see, you know, wish Al was still here, we could. It was a, a great turnout, and the other thing is people were doing it on Sunday as well. A lot of people came, got the materials on Saturday morning, and then I saw a lot of people picking up stuff on, on Sunday as well, so that was a great event. Uh, the other thing I was going to mention is don't forget to vote. Election day is Saturday, May 19th. Uh, there are contested elections, um, and do your civic duty. Try to get to town. Um, um, the high school gymnasium to vote. I think the hours, are they from 8 until 5? Mm -hmm. Good. So I got the right hours. So please make sure you remember that. Last thing is the uh, Situate Beach Association is doing a 10K, and it's on Sunday, May 20th. So um, there's another uh, six-mile run. It's a new route. So um, I believe it's at uh, 8 or 9 in the morning down on uh, Otis and Situate Ave. So if people are interested in running, Sean, I understand you've been doing a lot of exercising. Maybe we'll see you <laughs> down there. So I look forward to seeing other people. So please keep that in mind. Thank you. And uh, just to tag on to the running thing, there was a, uh, um, a run this past weekend. Um, it was the uh, uh, Patterson run, or it's now taken over by the school committees, and it was a great turnout. There was an event for kids down by the Common, and then it was a, uh, a 10K. Yep, five, 10 10K. K. Yep, 10 and K. five. And a five. Um, a great turnout, and all the, uh, the funding went to the different uh, PTOs in the different schools and to the high school um, in the memory of uh, um, Pat Mr. Patterson. So and I thought Sean came in second for his age group. I don't know, <laughs> Sean. Thank you. I did, wasn't going to say. But oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, anything else? I just have one quick thing, and I, I, I attended the dinner for the celebration of St. Luke's three, 200th and, Kim, help me, 200th and oh, um, anniversary yeah, of St. Luke's. Uh, it was at the back of Tavern. It was an anniversary dinner, and I just want to publicly, uh, along with the board, I'm sure, uh, congratulate and thank St. Luke's for all they've done for the for the amount of time that they've been there. I think it's been 50 years uh, as our neighbor next door, and they've been a great neighbor. So we appreciate all they've done, and uh, congratulations to them. So our next meeting will be on Tuesday, May 21st. Second. 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 May 22nd, and that'll be a short meeting. It'll be a reorganizational meeting. So the board will, um, assuming Mr. Murray gets reelected, um, will reorganize and elect a new chair and, and clerk. And um, and then after that, I assume two weeks later, there'll be a, another full full agenda meeting. So thank you all. You, if you're watching this, it's not live because we had a problem with uh, cable um, television, but you can watch reruns. Good night.
Actually, we've got to finish these. We don't have any, but uh, the next one, correspondence, item 13, we don't have any, Mr. Chairman. And item 14, the minutes, we don't have any of those, Mr. Chairman. All right, to number 15, which is adjourned. Move that the Board of Selectmen vote to adjourn the meeting at 8.34 p.m. 9. 8.34. 9.34. 9. 9. Cheapers, my eyes are Wish killing me. Yeah. I wish. Second by Mr. Norton. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Good night, folks. Thanks, Zach.